victory has begun! Death to the MPLM! Yo, I hit the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me all in little coat. Come on, Boko, in my ramen, I'ma need another bowl. Let's go. Hey everyone, so I uh, just got home from VidCon, and, and not only do I not have content ready, but I also fucking caught COVID. So these are all the Alpha and Omega videos in one video, so you can watch them while you sleep or something. Look, if they can money launder, so can I! Give it up, Humphrey, you'll never beat me! Alpha and Omega is the worst movie ever made. At least it is to me. And mind you, when I say the worst movie ever made, I mean to me, subjectively. This is my personal least favorite movie of all time. I will admit there are movies that are probably on a technical objective level worse. But even then, most of those movies I can enjoy at least ironically. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. <laughs> How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? But with Alpha and Omega, let's just say it's a, a very different story. The thing is, when a serious movie fails at being serious, it's a lot easier to make fun of it. But when a comedy fails at being funny or cute, it doesn't make you laugh. It makes you cringe. Uh, make me cringe! <laughs> and Alpha and Omega is definitely cringy. Cringe. So with a cringy but relatively generic kids movie that barely made back its budget, Naturally, it spawns seven sequels, a licensed game, which is better than Arkham City, trust me, and a surprisingly passionate fan base. In fact, this movie has already been reviewed by the Nostalgia Critic, the Nostalgia Critic, and a child molester. But how bad could this movie be, really? I'm sure I, the not nostalgia critic will totally not be let down by this movie i literally called the worst movie ever made earlier in the video uh, look okay i i um i i need to transition into the actual review i don't know how to do movie reviews please just f fucking kill me so our film opens with wolf bobsledding and we're introduced to our main character humphrey he's the funny one we're also introduced to kate and she's the woman and she's play hunting with her sister lily who is 100 percent furry bait you can't escape and the wolves are all doing very goofy things. It's really funny, I really assure you. And then the wolves- the, What?! Yeah, this is how, uh, physics work. And then Humphrey and Kate are somehow in the air, and then they dive into each other, and they're a helicopter now. But they're not in love, though. This is just really bad foreshadowing. And practice hunting for our lunch. Oh good, cause I'm about to lose my- <laughs> Now if you couldn't tell, the animation is amazing. And by amazing, I of course mean it looks like an original Xbox game. I'm not even kidding either, here's Alpha and Omega, and here's Time Splitter's Future Perfect. You get dental? Yeah. Yeah. And then they fall and die, and then Kate leaves for Alpha school. It goes till spring. Spring? But that's the whole winter away. Do a sin! And then Kate's dad comes down, and he's all like, an Alpha and Omega mixed race couple? Cringe! And then Humphrey looks at Kate's asshole, and judging by the audience of this movie, I doubt he's the only one. Alphas and Omegas can't make. Uh, not. Um, how, how do you say it? And then the title card happens, and then the wolves are back on the bobsled again. What? Get your butt out of my way. And then at long last, Kate is back from Alpha School, and Humphrey and the other furries in the audience want to fuck her so badly. Kate's an alpha now, and you're you're black. What? No. You better set your sights over there, the vegetarians. Uh. uh Gross! Berries! I honestly really don't get this scene. Usually in comedies like these with the really gross woman, ew! Usually the woman in question is so hideous and so repulsive that nobody wants her. Yeah! Used to be shit house. But in this movie, the gross women eat berries? But berries aren't gross though! I guess eating healthy is gross. Sorry, kids. Hey, hey. Eastern pack wolves. Ah, Arabian allegory, of course. And then they rip off the Lion King. And then Kate breaks the physics engine again. And then, I don't know, John Wick starts killing people or something. And then wolf racism happens. You stupid Eastern dog. And then there's a big fight or something. I don't know. But thankfully, the Omegas are here. And they're going to make one big thing clear. This movie isn't funny. Come on, the caribou are laughing at us. <laughs> but now that's a moon I don't want to howl to. You know... That line would be funnier if, like, Duke Nukem delivered it. Damn. 
Now that's a moon I don't want to howl to. We're then introduced to Kate's mom, who is literally Karen Wolf. If any of you wolves have hurt my daughter, I will personally rip out your eyes and shove them down your throat so you can see my claws tear your pockets open. And then we get a talking scene with Kate's family, and it's revealed that Kate's dad is a massive wolf racist. When they crossed into our territory, they broke back. Gay. But despite hating the Eastern Pack Wolves, he has no problem starting up a two-man Illuminati with the Eastern Pack Wolves leader, where they discuss things like uniting the pack and starting up their one wolf government. I'm sorry, am I watching a kid's movie about wolves or am I playing deus ex? It was you who gave the big speech that your daughter Kate and my son Garth would marry and unite the packs. So yeah, we're in arranged marriage territory now, and it's revealed that Kate needs to marry Dennis Hopper Wolf's son, who she will meet at the Midnight Howl. She can meet Garth tonight at the Moonlight Howl. But what is the Midnight Howl, you may be asking? Well, you're about to find out, and it's prom for furries. So Kate gets ready for the Moonlight Howl. Oh, Kate. You look so beautiful. She just put a flower in her hair. And we're finally at the Midnight Howl scene and... Oh. Oh. Can you describe the Nova 6 victims? You know... When I was a kid, I watched this movie in school. It was almost summer and we didn't have anything else to do. I was in like, what, fifth or sixth grade at the time? And Monsters Inc. was skipping, so this was the only option we had. Now, up until this point, I hated this movie. It was obnoxious, generic, and I was just not feeling it. But then this scene, this is what broke me. And then I realized, I'm not just watching a bad movie. I'm watching the worst movie of all time. Like, what is this scene supposed to be? Is it meant to be a song number? Because it fails at that. The lyrics are literally just how, 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 how. Is it meant to be funny? Well, well guess what? Nobody's laughing! Sex. Sex. And what are these dance moves? Is that the Fortnite? This scene is garbage. It's literally cringe. And we're already 15 minutes in. It can't go much better from here. So Humphrey fawns over Kate some more, but all his friends are like, Humphrey, you can't date her. He <laughs> are black. And then Humphrey's friends try to kill him because he's black. And then more physics. And then Kate finally meets Garth, the man she's supposed to marry. Hey, hey Kate. Damn, Daniel. And at first, Kate's in love with him. Good to see you. But despite being strong and capable, it's revealed that Garth is a terrible singer. Bro, this is just trippy red. What's wrong with this? So because Garth is a bad howler, which has zero practical use whatsoever, Kate is turned off by him. So she runs from him for a little bit and meets up with Humphrey. Your uh, howling partner, he's not a, uh, he's not a stud, uh, a dud. A dud. <laughs> he's not a dud. In fact, Brother. So this goes on for a while, but then Kate gets shot. Thank God, finally. But sadly, it's with a trank dart. A trank dart full of lean, bro. Wait a minute, that's not lean, that's... And then they pass out or something, and they're transported to a brand new location. A place so far away, it looks the exact same as the last location they were in. We're then introduced to two new characters, a goose and a duck. I forget their names, so we'll have to check the Alpha and Omega wiki later. And these two characters exist for the sole purpose of being the comedic relief, which has always worked. So the funny characters are playing a nice little game of The Last of Us Part 2. Caden Humphrey then find them, and a wacky slapstick scene happens. Quick, look behind you! So then comedy happens, and the wolves find out where they are. Idaho? Idaho? And then there's a sex joke in this movie. Yeah, not kidding. You were, uh, relocated to, um... <laughs> sex. Oh, what? Poggers! So everyone's like, we gotta get back to Jasper! And the funny birds are all like, oh, we know Jasper! So they have to hitch a ride in secret. From a character from Ride to Hell Retribution, who for some reason sounds like Arthur Morgan. Come here, you! Let's think. You're okay, boy. And then foreshadowing. 
I love you, Deb. Audio jungle. And then they hitch the ride, and they're on their way to Jasper. And then completely out of nowhere, Kate suddenly has a vision of the future. This is never explained or brought up again, so this scene is fucking pointless. Even when the events do happen later in the movie, nobody acknowledges that Kate literally had a vision about them. And to think, MSN movies call this a howling good time. I trusted you, MSN movies. So Kate wakes up to Lil Uzi Vert, and Humphrey is rocking out. Meanwhile, Garth is talking to Lily, and they're really hitting it off. Oh, I get it. You're a funny Omega. No, silly. I'm a woman. I can't be funny. Okay. Make me laugh. Um. Funny what? You're pretty good. Pretty. Good. What's this? So yeah, uh, that all happens. And now we're at a gas station and Humphrey has to go pee. So he's about to go, but then he smells a donut. And despite having to use the bathroom really badly, he never actually uses it. This is a massive plot hole and therefore I am giving this movie a zero out of 10. But then Humphrey's cover is blown. Whose footprints are these? So then this guy comes out of nowhere and tries to kill Humphrey. So all in all, I think he's the real hero of the movie. And then Humphrey pees. <laughs> Well, at least the plot holes are answered. Kate then saves Humphrey in the nick of time, but they're blocked by a gate, and they're about to die, but then... Wait a moment, what? How the fuck does a shotgun make a hole that big in a yard guard? That is physically impossible. Who animated this? Actual fucking wolves? Anyways, they missed their ride, so they had to travel by foot, Lord of the Rings style. Trust me, I wish I were watching Lord of the Rings right now. But then it starts raining, so Humphrey does a funny rain dance. And this is truly where the Xavier Renegade Angel type animation really hits peak. What are you around. doing? It's a, it's a rain dance. Hey yo, oh, hey yo. Oh. Aw, shucks. I forgot it. But we can jog my memory with the Lakota memory jogging dance. Hey yo, hoo. I can't remember the memory jogging dance. So Kate then sees a cliff and does some epic Mirror's Edge parkour, but then slips and I pray to God that she eventually dies. But Humphrey is here and he does the Nathan Drake. Kate goes out for Jaws and grabs... I did not see that! So Humphrey saves Kate. And then there's a death fake out. We were helping. And now they're back on the trail. The next day, Kate and Humphrey wake up next to each other and their love begins to blossom. But then the train busts through the city and Leo's like, we gotta stop the train. We gotta get out of the train, Morty. And then the ducks show up and they're like, oh, there's a train. I already made the Inception joke. I'm very creative today. Back to Garth and Lily. The two of them do more stuff together. <laughs> And then Garth realizes, wait a minute, this is an e-girl. Wow. What's your OnlyFans, babe? Back to Caden Humphrey. They're in a snowy location that only the Alpha and Omega Wiki will know about. How's that for a girl's throat? After some shit I don't care about happens, Humphrey runs into a baby bear. And the bear can speak wolf, apparently. Wow. What are you? Well, I'm black. Humphrey then starts playing with the baby bear in what is admittedly a cute and wholesome scene. And then the bear throws a snowball at Humphrey. And so Humphrey throws it back. And the once wholesome scene is completely ruined because the bear starts crying. Even though the, the bear was just playing snowball fighting with him? Is this meant to be funny? It's not funny. A kid is fucking crying. <laughs> Nobody's laughing! But then, uh-oh, there's a big bear, and that's the mother of the baby bear! Also, for some reason, the baby bear can speak wolf English. Wow. Have you heard what of the high elf? But yet, the mother bear doesn't speak wolf English? <laughs> I guess whoever made this movie never heard of consistency before. Or, I don't know, making a good fucking movie. So then there's like a, a bear action sequence. And now there's three bears? Hey, guys, you guys like jokes? How about another joke, Murray? So, okay, so two bears are uh, eating a clown. And, and one of the bears says, Please Get what you fucking deserve! Bruh. And then Kate starts breaking the physics engine again. <laughs> But then with the power of snowballs and the power of walking backwards and the power of hanging from a tree branch Hey, Mr. Peanut, no you don't. Don't do it, Mr. Peanut. No. no! They then fall off the cliff and then Humphrey sees the tree split in half and using the power of wolf bobsledding saves Kate from the bear. The bear then dies and Kate and Humphrey make it to the train safely. Hoggers. Back with Lily and Garth, Lily is teaching him how to sing, and that's about it. Back with Kate and Humphrey, they were having so much fun discussing what just happened. Who's that little bear in that snowball, but it was so cute. 
you. Oh. We almost lost our lives. That was so rad. And then we. Oh. For some reason, I thought of my first fight with Tyler. Peyton Humphrey, World Adventures. What do you think? Big black nigga balls HD. No, no, I'm telling you, we're. We're on to something here. Hey, stick with me, pup. We'll go places. We'll have seven shitty directed DVD sequels of this bullshit. Back to Lily and Garth again. Lily is teaching him how to sing, and that's about it. Howl from right here. And use tons of auto tune. Back with Caden Humphrey again. It's revealed that Humphrey is actually a. Oh, for fuck's sake. Who did it? Who fucking did it? Who sat down and went, hmm, what if we put in a bunch of song numbers, but all the lyrics are the word howl over and over again? To give the song credit, at least it's uh, tolerable, I guess? Better than the last one. But it's just the words howl over and over again. There are no actual lyrics or anything. But anyways, yeah, it turns out Humphrey is a good howler? Poggers! Back to Lily and Garth again. Lily is teaching him how to sing, and that's about it. And then the song number keeps going or something, yeah, whatever. Back to Lily and Garth again. Lily taught him how to sing, and that's about it. But then Dennis Hopper finds them, and even though he's pro uniting the packs, he's still in favor of this arbitrary wolf cast system. So the dad's all like howling with an e girl. I, I was just. Son, you're a simp. So the dad's all like, We're going to take the valley and our caribou. So the stakes are really high now. Back with Caden Humphrey. Tate is sleeping, and the ducks tell Humphrey, Uh huh, you should be a girlfriend. And then they hit a wall. Meanwhile, wolf war is happening, and it's getting high. And intense. You know what though? Fuck that shit. Back to Caden Humphrey. Kate wakes up and she's like, Oh, Humphrey, I had so much fun today. But then she sees the Wolf War Zone and she goes, If I don't get in, then I won't be able to get the Call of Duty War Zone Victory Royale. Meanwhile, Humphrey is all like, Kate, I want to have sex with you. Oh, jeez. And now shit's getting a little crazy. All I asked was for you to follow our customs, but no. Your daughter had to up and run away. I did run away. So Kate's finally back home. And hopefully the movie can end sooner because of it. Where have you been? In Idaho. Idaho? What were you doing in Idaho? We were supposed to... Sex. Karen Wolf then tries to choke out Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> And then Bowser from the Mario movies are like, you have to marry Garth! And Kate's like, I will marry Garth! But Humphrey's like, I wanna fuck Kate though! And Lily's like, I want Garth though! And Garth's like, I want the E-Girl! And Abe Lincoln's like, But Joan, I love- The next day, Humphrey visits Kate. But this time he tells her he's leaving Jasper. You know, it's a lone wolf. Thing. Well, I know Humphrey the fun-loving Omega. That's the second time I've been able to sneak up on the legendary Solid Snake. Anyways, the ending is predictable as fuck. Kate and Garth are about to get married, but then Kate's like, I can't get married! I, uh... Fell in love with an Omega? Whoa, dude, that's so crazy. That's like the title of the movie. That's, that's well, so- some kind of suicide squad. <laughs> <laughs> in love with an Omega. That's against pack law. Dad, I am a simp for e-girl pussy. And then the Dennis Hopper dad declares war. And then the war happens. And then there's a stampede of a bunch of caribou, even though caribou is scarce, apparently. And then Humphrey comes back. And then there's more wolf bobsledding. And then the physics engine breaks again. And then Kate dies. Like, she actually dies, though. No joke. Kate. And then the movie ends. Now nah, I'm just kidding with you, Kate's alive, bro. And then the dads are supportive of it out of nowhere for no reason, despite the fact that they just went to war over it. And then Garth and Lily start yiffing all over the floor. And then there's another song number. And then there's one last howl from our main couple. Are you ready? Oh yeah, ready. <sighs> Yeah, that was fucking dog shit. I'm not kidding when I say that this is the worst movie I have ever seen. This movie is the antithesis of what I like in movies. The plot is, at best, a generic Romeo and Juliet knockoff, and at worst, a nonsensical piece of garbage that can only be enjoyed by children. The song numbers broke me mentally. The jokes aren't funny. And every time I saw any two wolves nuzzling each other, ooh, 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 raw rx3, I wanted to fucking kill myself. Now, as mentioned earlier, I'm not the first one to have talked about this movie. 
movie. This movie has also been reviewed by the name's Junkie. No way, my boy Junkie here. And it was also reviewed by some deer girl. I don't fucking. Despite the concept of wolf packs being explored in a fantasy setting being incredibly interesting in my opinion, the cliche nature of this movie doesn't really help its case. Wow, this person made a fucking college essay on Alpha and Omega. This person also made a video called the end. Oh no, 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 I bring all these reviews up because, actually, I don't know why, I just really wanted to talk about it. But yeah, uh, this movie is extreme cringe, and I really don't like it, but I also don't know how to end videos, so, uh, I don't know, thanks for watching. cringe. <laughs>
This is where we fell in love. Hey, you guys remember Alpha and Omega 1? Oh, and I almost forgot. Can you retrieve the buried bones? We're serving bones. Our first dinner. <gasps> Are you criticizing my dinner choice? Typical women. Wait a minute, though. Eating bones is not a good sign. Didn't you guys eat bones only because there was a famine? At least in the last movie? I didn't know bones were a conscious cooking choice. The more you move it, the more chance you got of breaking the burger. Also, the animation quality has gone really downhill. Where the first Alpha and Omega looked like Time Splitter's Future Perfect on the original Xbox, the sequel is much more stiff and is more akin to Fight Club the video game on the original. Original Xbox. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Bruh. Hey, Humphrey. Yeah, this guy then comes out of complete nowhere. Only because, hey, remember Alpha and Omega 1? And then they talk and then go outside. Cut back to the kids dicking around or something. Hey, check it out. I see three wolves down in the valley. So yeah, there are some new wolf characters now. And I bet you they aren't going to be the shoehorned villains or anything. Remember Grandpa Winston said there were rogue wolves in the area. But aren't like all the wolves now united? Was the first film literally all for nothing? Can someone fill me in on this? I need Alpha and Omega Fan 45 to fill me in on the Alpha and Omega lore. Hey! Who are you guys? Oh yeah, they're evil. You hear that drum? Well, that was real. And then literally out of nowhere, a bear comes out. We just met these wolves and now we have a, a bear scene? I I'm not mad or anything. I'm just, what the fuck? I, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Right this way, wolf eater! <gasps> you... You literally trapped Bruh. yourselves. Bruh. And then the other wolves save them. And then the animation quality dies. And now they're saved from the bear. You guys just here to hang out? We're just passing through. We're from Banff. You gotta love how the new wolf models are significantly lower quality than the older wolf models. Wow, dude, Halo Infinite okay. looks amazing so far. Cut back to Kate and Humphrey. They talk for a bit and that's literally about it. Did you see the pups? Uh, no, I didn't. Cut back to the pups, but only two of them because one of them is missing. Ooh. He probably rushed down to help and... Wait a minute, that's not the real sound quality. Could they not get better sound effects for that? That literally sounded like a PS1 sound effect. I could get better sound effects from freesound.org. We're then reintroduced to Karen Wolf and the Dad Wolves. The rogue leader wanted to be king and couldn't. And then I told him he turns himself into a pickle. We're then reintroduced to Garth and the E-Girl. This time in the much inferior lighting engine. Garth. It's time you found a cave. Oh, that's not a good Dennis Hopper impression. Overall, the scene is basically, remember Alpha and Omega 1? And then the pups come home. Hi there. Where's Runt? So now everyone's looking for Runt. And oh, that does not look good. And then they find the evil wolves. And now the animation looks even worse. Was this outsourced in the middle of production or something? This looks awful. This is the rogues. They will have a lot of wolves. Cut to Runt being taken to the rogue wolves. Literally made up of five people. That's a lot of wolves. And you are... King. <laughs> Original. And let me guess, you're Princess. Yes. Well, King, don't blame me if you were rejected by my grandpa. This is not how you write dialogue. This is all you brought me? I told you I wanted the Travis Scott meal. I'm Travis Scott. This is my McDonald's order. <laughs> Meanwhile, Caden Humphrey are on the way to BAM, but they come across a large river. So how do they get across, you may ask? How are we gonna get across this? By referencing the first film, of course. No, Kate, no vines. <laughs> But we did it last time. Wow, they really went full Rise of Skywalker this time. So they literally just repeat the same Vine scene from the first movie, but this time on the budget of how much it costs to buy a Travis Scott meal from McDonald's. Then there's some walking and they sleep in a cave, and that's about it. We then see the girl princess character giving Runt food in a scene that would be much more wholesome if Runt would just shut the fuck up. You look cold. No, I'm just... And probably hungry. I, uh... I'm a picky eater. Also, notice the princess's hair in this scene. Yeah, there's a shot that they cut to where they forgot to give her her hair. Is this movie a joke? Is this movie a joke? Hold on, let me go on the iTunes movie review page for this movie. Let me see if there's people that agree with me. Ah, uh, here we go. I love music 6627. I'm 11 and I hate this movie. Here is why. One, title is too blah. Two, animation is cheesy. Three, and my bro is eight. He hates this movie. And I asked him. Go waste your money on The Cruise. If you even rent this movie, you will still not like it. You know what? 
I can't top that. I think we're done with this video. Video's over. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Come back to everyone else. Everyone's all like, oh yeah, we got a big, huge army. But Kate's all like, you know, our animation budget is $6. I'll have another pack hiding in the field. Attack and destroy our home. <sighs> we'll have to go with a smaller contingent. I'm in chapter 11 bankruptcy. The evil wolves talk more and then that's it. Oh my goodness, what is with these sound effects? Did they not have the budget for freesound.org? Anyways, the other pups sneak out and that's about it. Cut back to Kate and Humphrey. Turns out the bird characters from the first movie found them. And they're in this movie because, uh, remember the first Alpha and Omega movie? How did you find us? Let's just say someone's bad shot flew up and over the cliff. Um, haha -ha funny? NOBODY'S LAUGHING! Well, this is really serious. The rogue wolves have captured Runt. What? Wait a minute, how do they know who Runt is? Cut to the rogue wolves again. Wow, what a way to Shut, Shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up. Caden Humphrey then me up with the other pups. How the heck did you find us? Whose footprints are these? This leads to, I kid you not, another reference to the vine scene from the first movie. But they just, they just did a reference to the vine scene from the first movie. Is this movie really that creatively bankrupt? This is garbage. Cut to Runt and the gang, and, and then this guy falls off a cliff. That's about it. Nothing happens in this scene. Nothing happens in this entire movie. Nothing happens. Why does this have a fan base? This is terrible. Hold on, let me go on iTunes again. Who liked this movie? Who even likes this garbage? Oh, uh, here we go. Mr. Tran 65 with the, the review titled comedy. I don't want watch this movie right now. I just want rent only for this movie. You know what? I couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. Cut to Caden Humphrey again. He's alive. But he's surrounded by a pack. And that's all that happens. Cut to Rudd and Princess. They talk, that's it. Are you gonna eat me? Yes. Eat you? <laughs> I make vine compilation. Cut to Caden Humphrey. They spot a baby bear. And for some reason, just like in the first movie, the baby bear can speak wolf English, but the grown up bear can't. So, in other words, nobody gave an actual fuck. Here's hoping Alpha and Omega 8 can clear up these plot issues. Hey, can I come with you? Talk to the paw. So, Humphrey's all like, yeah, fuck you, kid. But then. So you're just gonna leave that cup alone? Wait a minute, who are you? Yeah, so this random porcupine character comes out of nowhere and tells Humphrey to take in the baby bear. Did anyone actually care when making this thing? Was there any effort put into this movie? Like, honestly, was there any effort at all? This is easily the laziest movie I have ever watched in my life. So Humphrey takes in the baby bear and the pups are all like, Dad, Stinky and I had our fill with a bear yesterday. Even though five seconds earlier, they were all like, so cute. Uh, for, for a future predator. No, 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 no. You, you can't do that. You, you cannot do that. You just can't have characters have one motivation and switch it. it, it like, it, what? what if this were Runt? Then I'd eat him. Okay. So then Kate and Humphrey are all like, You pups, stay here with Patty. And the pups are all like, I fucking hate mom and dad for keeping us here. And now it's time for Kate and Humphrey to face the rogue wolves. Oh my gosh. Even with our entire pack here, they'd outnumber us. There's like five wolves there. The pups then meet up with the dad wolves and there's more talking and shit. What are you doing with the bear cub? We kind of adopted him. Another question. What is lick my? Everybody keeps telling me I have lick my or was diagnosed with lick. It's uh, lick my balls. I'm very sorry. Also, in this shot, one pup is on the left and one pup is on the right. I don't remember their fucking names. But then in a separate shot, they completely switch sides. Like I said, nobody cared when making this thing. Logic is not our friend here. You're goddamn right. Just so you are the cocaine -er. In my nose, Mr. Witter. <laughs> Mr. Witte, I require a method. Caden Humphrey then meet up with the other wolves. Dad? Dad? And then his hopper's all like, Some of those wolves used to run with my pack. Right, they'll recognize us. But they don't know me as an alpha. So Humphrey rides on Garth's back pretending to be an alpha, and the rogue wolves fall for it? That is one big wolf. He's so powerful, his legs don't even move. I want you to howl. Did you hear that weak howl? Wait a minute, though. He was a good howler in the last movie. Did the movie forget its own plot? W what the fuck is going on here? Audio jungle. And then they talk for a little bit. Where did you come from? I was... This man, Cy Gangnam Style, assassinated Ian Hecox of Smosh. Oh, him? He's cringy. A supreme alpha. 
like all of us. Tell me, do you play on Xbox? Talk about gaming. They then sneak Runt away from the bad guys and they escape from the other bad guys. But now there's a massive chase scene. Oh boy, this is gonna be action packed. Take the pumps to the north side. Well, what about me? I'll bring you to the middle of the forest. And then the mom bear comes out of nowhere. And then Princess becomes good and runs away, I guess. Princess! Princess! <laughs> And now the bears are working with the wolves, and there's a whole action scene now. And then the fighting just kind of ends. <laughs> <laughs> Cut back to Kate Humphrey and the pups. They are all really cold and need shelter. And then they die. Nah, JK, they wolf bobsled again. Then they see that one guy from the first movie, but the model is incredibly shittier. And the movie's like, oh yeah, this is a Christmas movie. So the guy lets them in, they sleep in his house, and th then the movie ends. Oh yeah, that's the ending. A shoehorn Christmas message is the ending of this movie. This is a fucking joke. You know what? That was really painful. But I'm gonna be honest here. I kinda liked it a little bit more than the first. To be fair though, it is for all the wrong reasons. There's a certain entertainment factor to how bad this movie actually is. It was rushed and it really shows. Especially when most of this movie is based on just referencing the first movie. In other words, Alpha and Omega, The Rise of Skywalker. But with that extra hint of laziness that made it funny to me. It goes back to what I said in the previous Alpha and Omega video. I take a bad, enjoyable movie than a bad, bad movie. For one thing, this film completely removes all the song numbers. There are dumb mistakes that made me die laughing. And while this film did make me want to kill myself, it was only like 40 minutes. So by the time I grabbed the noose, the movie was already over. So yeah, don't get me wrong, it's really fucking bad. But I mean, I enjoyed it more than the first one. I really can't recommend it. But I mean, it's something all right. And yeah, that's all there is to say. I'm the nostalgic critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Now if you excuse me, I gotta get myself a Travis Scott burger. Oh yeah, and my Sprite. Same order since back in Houston, and you could try too. I'm probably hungry. I, uh, I'm a picky eater, just warning you. Here's my quarter pounder with lettuce, uh, pickles, can... onions, ketchup, mustard, and bacon. I wish I could be you. Oh, honey, we're going to try again. Okay, come on. She hit the water hard. But somehow she managed to survive. Anyway, the shock triggered some kind of amnesia. Raiden, squeeze my heart. So, um... We're finally here. You know what this is. I know what this is. My question is, who keeps asking for these? Because after watching Alpha and Omega 3, the Great Wolf games, I am now fully convinced that this entire franchise is one big money laundering scheme. Did you know Alpha and Omega is now at McDonald's? I'm Travis Scott. This is my McDonald's order. You know, I watched this movie with my Discord server, which you too can actually join by becoming a patron. For only $1 a month, you can join my Discord server. You can watch shit movies with me and you can give me your money. Furthermore, if you give me one dollar, that's one less dollar spent on Alpha and Omega 3, the Great Wolf game. I'm legit shamelessly plugging in my Patreon because I have nothing else to say about this movie. I legit watched this thing twice and I still don't know what happens in it. This movie is the equivalent of listening to Playboy Cardi lyrics. So I guess we'll uh, jump in now. I'm the nostalgia critic. Fuck my life. So our film opens literally the exact same way Alpha and Omega 2 did. You have these static images of pre-existing environments, and even the logo animation is the exact same. Whoa, man, nobody told me Activision made this movie. We then begin with a stampede. Just like in the first movie. Cut to the pups watching the stampede. And they're all like, man, I wish I could stampede. They're really tearing it up. And then we see these other pups chasing after the stampede. And for some reason, they're literally sliding on the grass. And so the main pups are like, let's show them how to do it. And so they chase after the stampede. And then they just stop chasing them. Oh, Claudette, we could have been feasting. You're too 
Young. Wow, that was a, a really important scene. I'm glad we spent our first two minutes in that scene. We then meet a new pup who is the exact same model as Stinky. And I guess the female pup is also in love with him. I don't fucking know what's happening. And then he's all like, you know, we're part of the Northern team for the great games. Which is, in fact, the subtitle for Alpha and Omega 3, the Great Wolf Games. McGrill says the Western pack took a pass at the games. They haven't played Call of Duty in years. The Eastern team. Wait a minute, the Eastern team? Didn't the Eastern and the Western pack, like, unite in the first movie? Here's hoping that Alpha and Omega Lover 120 can answer this for me. And then the Cubs are like, oh, we're gonna win the games. We're gonna win this game. Cut to Wolf bobsledding again. When the Alphas are away. The Omegas do play. Gotta love those alpha hunting trips. Gotta love exposition on this log board. Who <laughs> knew? <laughs> and then the pups are all like, Dad, do you know anything about the great games? And then Humphrey's all like, I fought in the console wars of the- Hey! Remember when Kate led us to victory? So this goes on for a while, and Humphrey's all like, the games, they're racist! Until the games return to being for all critters, we're taking the pass. Aren't they called the Great Wolf Games for a reason or something? So now the cubs are all sad. We failed. That's what the kids call epic fail. Yeah! And then Claudette sees the northern team again, and she jumps in the air really high. <laughs> Powered by source. And then the baby bear comes out. And for some reason, his voice is really deep and he has a lisp. Flying around little junior snap. And yet the model isn't changed at all. Man, you guys uh, really conserved that budget, didn't you? Yo, Junior Bear. Wait, Junior Bear. So I guess his name is also Junior Bear. Okay. okay. Could you not give him like a better name, like Marcello or something? Cut to the cubs in the woods, where they are literally out of nowhere attacked by bears. Do you see the issue here? Things just kind of happen in this movie. I don't even know what's happening. Who are these people? Who am I? Wh where am I? Who am I, really? All of your favorite McDonald's breakfast items oh, now available you know, all day at participating oh, yeah. McDonald's restaurants. Right. They then find Junior Bear, and they ask him if he can participate in the Great Wolf Games. But they're running out of time because the bears are chasing them. Why the cubs couldn't just tell the bear to divert the bears first is beyond me. Also, who is this guy? Is he that random character from the second movie? Because it's the same model, but they're voiced by two different people. In Alpha and Omega 2, he's voiced by a, a little Fortnite kid. Oh, no. I'm just gonna leave that cub alone. So I want your baby sucking on me. Okay, that- But in Alpha and Omega 3, he's voiced by, I don't fucking know, Nolan North. And Protector, Agnes. Bugs Bunny. Big, big chocolate, big chocolate. I don't get it. He's just a fat Bugs Bunny. <laughs> My name is Claudette. Wait a minute, D don't you know each other though? Why are you introducing yourselves again? Y you already know each other. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck's even happening anymore? So Junior joins the team, and so does the porcupine, I guess. They then trash talk the northern team. Yeah, that happens. Is this my cheering section? That's funny. More like kick your butt. Yo, yo, yo! Ah! The team then starts practicing. Hang on a moment. Is that the music from the first movie? And you know what? They did the exact same thing for Alpha and Omega 2 as well. They are reusing so many previous assets that even the soundtrack is being reused. It would be so awesome. I'll shake my booty in oh, my own no! Anyways, back to them running. So the porcupine gets mad because some wolves laugh at him or something. And then he's all like, I'll show those dogs back. You wanna see some real speed? And then uh, this happens. Agnes, control your speed. You know what happens. <laughs> so apparently if he goes too fast, he starts flying or something. <laughs> How? Why? What? What is this? <laughs> Nobody's laughing! And also, the bear hates the birds or something. He's got bird issues. Bird issues? They're not birds. They are monsters. Gosh. I'm already a demon. There's a whole slapstick scene about it, and it's uh, very funny, I assure you. And yet this entire bird thing is only brought up in like two scenes, making this whole thing completely pointless. Sis, we need a coach. So now the team needs a coach. Cut to Humphrey diving into, what is that, NVIDIA thermal paste? And the pups are all like, Dad, we need a coach. They are one bird short of Noah's Ark. <laughs> And long story short, Humphrey becomes the coach. And that's about it. Cut to Humphrey training his child soldiers. Must you killed a child. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> what is 
is this? Hibernation season? Wait a minute, what the f- Did they just abruptly do a Star Wars transition? Was this edited on Windows Movie Maker? Man, I haven't seen a movie this lazy since Alpha and Omega 2, A Holiday Adventure. Now they're pushing a log and then uh, it transitions again. I kid you not, this log pushing scene is four seconds. Like I said earlier, things just happen in this movie and you are never given enough time to process it. So then they're running now and another transition happens. Wow, it's a good movie, good job. Now they're running again and the porcupine has an aneurysm or something, I don't fucking know. Then there's more running and that's about it. And then they train Junior Bear to get rid of his bird problem and he gets rid of it. Very good arc, 10 out of 10. No, 11 out of 10. And then more training happens and uh, that's about it. Cut to the next day. Humphrey meets the leader of the Northern team who has an insanely obvious pitch shifter. Well, great day for a game. My alpha team is raring to go. I get those goose right there, man. Could they not just use his normal voice? Also, the porcupine does this. <laughs> they just shoved his quills into the ground. Also, the background doesn't change between scenes. Very good, very good movie. And then for literally no reason, the enemy coach gets a PTSD flashback to his father. Father. I tried to win it for you. I really tried. It was the best that I could do. <laughs> Cut to the day of the race, where we see a goose who I thought was the funny goose in Alpha and Omega, only he's just wearing face paint this time. But no, believe it or not, this is a completely different character. Once again, they are literally recoloring old models and passing them off as new characters. Anyways, the race begins. A bear is keeping pace with the Alpha? The simp has fallen in love with the eager! <laughs> You wolves ready for this? Mm -hmm. ready for Nobody's this? laughing! You know, I I hate to say it, but Hasman Hotel is genuinely funnier than this. So long story short, the race keeps going, and the porcupine literally commits a foul. But it's okay, he's a good guy. He can commit fouls. And the race keeps going, and that's about it. Ba -ba 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 <laughs> and long story short, the uh, the good guy girl wolf wins. <laughs> Could they not get better cheering sound effects? <laughs> Cut to the female wolf talking to the uh, the recolor wolf. Ooh, 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 ooh. Long story short, nothing happens. And then the uh, girl wolf has a flashback to her mom teaching her the, uh, I don't fucking know, the gamer slide. And yeah, that's uh, about it. Cut to scary violin. <laughs> Turns out the evil wolf is talking to his son. And he's all like, You have to play a little rougher tomorrow. Why? Because this match is costing me a lot of Bitcoin, son. Oh, Bitcoin. Cut to the next day. I double dog dare wolf to step on my it's time for the second to last competition. And oh boy, oh boy, am I excited. So now they're climbing this cliff and it's so really epic. And then... Nice. What? Oh, foul! Oh, come on, shut the fuck up. So this isn't a foul, but this is? Anyways, the race continues and... Ah! Umpire, did you see that? Bruh. Umpire, they were cheating. Oh, okay, so when the heroes cheat, it's good, but when the bad guys cheat, oh, that's bad. Don't cheat, kitties, don't cheat. There is no way in hell this movie isn't a money laundering Epic scheme. Fail. Are you sure the Mexican cartel isn't involved with the production of this film? Because it sure as fuck seems like it. Anyway, so the recolor goose talks to two other recolor geese. What are they doing? Laying an egg? <laughs> we couldn't clearly see the play. No foul. What? That was as much a foul as a chicken is a foul. So long story short, the bad guys win this round. Yeah! Cut to the bad guys. Are you okay? <laughs> what is she saying? Why won't she ever speak directly to me? This is not how you write dialogue. The girl, are you okay? Speak up! She can't, Dad. Why not? Because she's terrified of you! And also, he couldn't afford her voice actor. So, a long story short, she's uh, injured and that's about it. And the bad guy wolf is all like, Oh, it's one versus one now. One against one. You wanna contrive this plot? I'm gonna join right in. I'm Hideo Kojima, and this is my video game. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. What, what am I doing? Also, the sky literally changes in this scene. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, I'll do it. Nars? Wait a minute, his name is Nars? Hey yo, who's your favorite Alpha and Omega character? Oh, my favorite? It's Nars. It's fucking Nars. You no, know, Claudette. I wonder if your games will be as good as your mom's. Yo, ma- I'm sure Fleet's games will be better than your games. What was that noise? Cut the Claudette. And the boy wolf. The boy wolf's all like, oh, I'm sorry. And the girl wolf's all like, you wanna have sex? sex. And the boy wolf's all like, <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? 
sex. So the dad's all like, son, do you need to train, son? The fuck you. And the son's all like, no, the fuck you, dad. But then allows him to control him anyways. The girl wolf then goes home and sees that Kate's home. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Kate then gives an inspirational speech that'll make any furry cry. Digging down deep and seeing what you're truly made of is what really is. People are getting game ended. What would you have me do? Drink monster, Master Wang. You'll get diabetes, but you'll still get a dub. And now it's time for the final race. The boy and the girl wolves uh, yiff on the floor for a little bit. And then uh, Caden Humphrey join in. It's a whole family gathering. He said that, what do you call yourself? And they go, the aristocrats. Do you see that? You see, look, he's flirting with her. Is that what you did to me? <laughs> <laughs> and I always Nobody's laughing! How could this day get any more? And now it's race time, and it's an epic straight line. You have uh, this shot that's clearly animated over a green screen. The race continues. You already basically know what happens at this point. But then Claudette slows down for him and lets him tie. Whoa, Pockers! <laughs> this film is a front for some illegal practices. This is a joke. So yeah, they tie or whatever. What do we do when there's a tie? The, the games end in a tie. Bruh. So Nars is mad at his son, but his son's all like, I'm gonna be the new coach of the Northern Region, and I'm looking for a few good competitors for next year. Yeah! So everyone's all like, oh, we all won in the end. It looks like we all won. So yeah, the film literally cops out at the very end. You know, Alpha and Omega won. I'm really sorry. I spent years hating you, but I didn't know how bad it would really get. You know, maybe I was just too harsh. Maybe I should give that movie a rewatch just to see. Oh yeah, never mind. It's still fucking dog shit. But at least the first film kind of tried. This movie can't even use proper sound effects. But anyways, the dad's all like, good job, son. You won. You won. And then the guy and the girl wolf walk off and then the movie ends the end. Welp, that was certainly Alpha and Omega 3, the Great Wolf Games. Yeah, this was easily the worst thing I've ever seen by far. The film is near incoherent because it just jumps all over the place. The animation is somehow not only recycled, but a downgrade yeah. from Alpha and Omega 2. I honest to God wouldn't be surprised if this were all a money laundering scheme. It just feels too cheap to be genuine. And not even like a funny kind of cheap, more just a depressing kind of cheap. So depressing in fact, that it makes Logan look like, I don't know, Teen Titans Go the movie. So in conclusion, this movie is gay and bad. The end. A sex man. Film. A product of gang by production. Okay, so I got a part in the video where I have to look up uh, the Alpha and Omega soundtrack, and uh, I looked up the, the Love Train song, and I decided to look in the comments, and... Uh, <laughs> Every time I come back to this movie, I realize more and more that my childhood is gone, and I'll never get the chance to love a cast of characters like that again. You're a big boss. I used to cry to this movie. Imagine crying to uh to Alpha and Omega. I was in love with a girl who was my best friend. I always used to pretend like she was Kate. Oh no, nigga! Every time I listen, the chills like get are painful. Something about channeling your emotions into lyricless singing overwhelms my senses. Look at this comment. Best part ever. Makes me feel all mushy inside. XD X3 XDDDD. I wish love was so easy in reality. <laughs> this franchise is horse. Sh Alpha and Omega 4 is a movie I watched. But before we get there though, do you guys know what month it is? That's right, it's October. AKA the month where Reddit gets to be extra unfunny. AKA Halloween, oh boy, oh boy. This makes this the perfect month to review Alpha and Omega 4, a movie that isn't actually called Alpha and Omega 4. Rather, it's called Alpha and Omega, The Legend of the Sawtooth Cave. Because I guess the words saw, tooth, and cave are scary. Anyways, yeah, this 
is the uh, Halloween one. Is it better than Alpha and Omega 3? Well, to be honest, anything's better than Alpha and Omega 3. But is it a good movie? Welp, to quote famous movie reviewer Toongrin. No, 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 no! You're the murderers! Snake! You should be in this boat! So our film opens, I kid you not, literally the exact same way Alpha and Omega 2 and 3 open. I kid you not, this is the third time they open the exact same way. Static images, title animation, this film's got it all, man. The only difference is that there's creepy music this time, which even then is just a reuse from the first movie. Number 7. Student watches porn and gets naked. So our film opens with a wolf chase scene, where this wolf is getting chased by a mysterious person. They then hide in the bushes, and then there's a pair of eyes. Wait a minute, is this an interesting opening scene in an Alpha and Omega movie? Oh, they really tried. Cut to Alpha School, a school full of recolors, where the animation is actually better. It's not like award-winning or anything, but the fur moves. At the very least, it's better than Alpha and Omega 3, which had a literal skybox change mid-scene. Is that mud on your snout, or is it always brown. Can you shut the fuck up? So long story short, the kids fight, and Winston's all like, oh, stop fighting! And Runt's also here, and I don't know, the token gets shot, I guess. But now, Kate Humphrey and the E-Girl are here, and the E-Girl's all like, We're going to an ecological phenomenon. Shadow forest. What? Poggers! I don't fucking get it! What does poggers mean? <laughs> and the kids all like, Isn't that haunted? Because it's the Halloween special. <laughs> My husband is on an extended hunting trip. Wow, that is extremely convenient. Thank you, film, for your scapegoat event thingy. Just like in the last movie when Kate was on a hunting trip for a majority of the movie. Cut to Shadow Forest. More like shit forest. <laughs> What happened that made us avoid it all this time? That's the old passage to Ravenholm. We don't go there anymore. Rise and shine. Some wolves claim that it's haunted with a wolf ghost. But that's at Freddy. So they're all like, oh, the forest is but scary and haunted. Like but then... Oh, my favorite, uh, the funny porcupine. I'm laughing so hard. So the porcupine's all like, you can't get in the forest, and they walk by him anyways. They then find a big scary cave, and it's really scary or something. It certainly seems protected. Protected? From what? From the liberals, of course. And then the leaves start moving, and Run starts climbing a tree, and then a ghost comes out. Yeah, I kid you not. My question is, how is there a ghost in this somewhat grounded universe? What the? It's about talking wolves. It's not grounded. Look, when I say grounded, I mean like Toy Story grounded. Yeah, there are talking toys, but you wouldn't see an actual fucking ghost in those movies. It's the same with this franchise. I was under the assumption that it was in the real world, kind of. But nah, fuck it. I guess there are ghosts in here. Our fan base is furries. Nobody cares about the lore or the tonal consistency or anything. So anyways, Runt's mortified by this. So they all go back home. And I guess not Dennis Hopper Wolf saw like... Runt. I told you to stay away from that place. It sounds like someone posting cringe. So not Dennis Hopper tells them a story. So in other words, lore. Was that the bite of 87? Cut to Vietnam, where Sergeant Woods is forced to, oh, my mistake, this is Call of Duty Black Ops. Sorry guys, they're, they're just too similar. I made an honest mistake. Anyways, cut to young Dennis Hopper. He finds the spooky cave and commands his two recolors to go in, but then they don't. So not Dennis Hopper goes in instead. The biggest surprise is that he's an original model. He then gets Jump scared by Golden yeah. Freddy and then runs away. It's gonna get us! It's gonna get us! He's tripping fools. They all then go to sleep, but not before Kate insults my ears with this line. Quite a powerful. Runt then has a dream sequence where he sees the cave and then he sees the, the ghost again and then he sees a, a woman. Ah! You okay, little brother? No, I was jump scared by Golden Freddy. <laughs> I have to go back. So because the pups are now the de facto main characters of this franchise, Big Boss style, they head back to Shadow Forest. Which, by the way, I say this as a non-fan of the franchise. What Alpha and Omega fan is clamoring for more of these fucking pup characters? They're not interesting at all. They're just really bad Sonic Underground knockoffs. So why have they essentially taken over the entire franchise? It just makes no sense to me. So now they're back at Shadow Forest. Are you two afraid? No. No. 
And then the two funny porcupines come out, who, despite one of them having the same model as the porcupine in the previous movie, are completely brand new and different characters! Check out Wolf Girl. She has got some serious attitude. So they walk by them again, and uh, that's about it. Now they're by the spooky cave, and things are about to get a little scary. They then run into Juice World, and they get chased by him or something, I don't know. They then hide in a bush, but uh-oh, one pup goes missing! Where is Stinky? So they look all over for him, and the one pup climbs a tree again. Take it! And then he sees the ghost and the g girl. It's protecting her. Yeah, that. And she then points to run on a cliff, and then they uh, they save him. They then go home, and Kate's really mad at them, and they're like, "Mom, we were going to Shadow Forest, ironically. It's okay." Pups, enough with that forest. It's making you cringy. What's next? Alicia. Why is every other joke in this franchise, what is this, a blank? What's next, a why? What is this, hibernation season? Here, let me try one. Who wrote this movie, the irate gamer? Didn't you two get into a lot of situations? But I wouldn't say it led to bad things. Hey guys, remember the first movie? Cut to Winston talking to those twins again. Long story short, they want to go to Shadow Forest, but Winston's like, no, cringe. And they're all like, ever since Winston allowed Kate to marry Humphrey, the alphas have always gotten the short end. And that's about it. Meanwhile, Kate and Humphrey are stalking their children, and they're like, oh, we want to be by ourselves, Mom and Dad. So Humphrey has the funny duck and goose stalk them, because it's not an alpha and omega movie without the comedic relief. So they're stalking the children, and then the duck hits himself. And the cubs then see them stalking them. So the boy one and the girl one then chase the big goose out to this completely different location. How much do you want to bet this is just an environment from the first movie? Run then goes back to the spooky cave. Hello? Hello? So he's all like, Can I come up? Please don't. Okay, we're making progress. I mean, she told you no. So Runt invades her home anyways, because no means yes in this universe. A uh, housewarming game. You found it in front of her house, dumbass. Not afraid. I am king of the- Does this character ever Bruh. shut the fuck up? Doesn't scare me! I once fought a bitch! The kid is then pulled inside, and I guess the ghost just gave up or something. We then meet the girl character, and she's all like, You've been to Rabbit Poo Mountain? Yes, you heard that correctly, the Rabbit Poo Mountain. And they actually try to take this seriously? You've been to Rabbit Poo Mountain? Yes. You you named your location Rabbit Poo Mountain? Why are you being serious all of a sudden? What? Couldn't you have picked, like, literally any other name? Wait a minute, Rabbit Poo Mountain? So anyways, the weird girl's all like, Come back tomorrow. So the one pup leaves, and uh, that's about it. Cut to those twin wolves meeting the, uh, the funny porcupine. They fight for a bit, and there's a, a, a peeing joke. <gasps> He's marking my <laughs> The wolves then go deeper in the forest. They then get chased by, a uh, Lil Peep out of the forest. And they go back to Winston and Dennis Hopper, and they're all like, We saw Jossie on boy in the forest! Order! 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 But sadly, nobody believes them. Cut to that night. Do you mind? I was having a nice dream about a moonlight owl. Sounds more like a PTSD trip to me. If we chase out the ghost, we will be heroes. Runt then leaves his cave, and he sees the twins for about one second, and th that's about it. He then goes to Shadow Forest, and goes inside the cave super easily because the ghost protecting it is completely useless. Are you hiding from another pack? Yes, because a wolf who can't see isn't considered useful to some? Yes. But if she's not useful, then why is she being chased? You know how to get to Rabbit Poo Mountain. Oh, we're still doing this shit, aren't we? So anyways, Runt's all like, I am not a Shut pup. the fuck up! What's at Rabbit Poo Mountain? This initiates the flashback scene, where we see some wolves on GM Construct, a map that is actually powered by Source. We then see uh, this guy, and we also see these guys. And one of these guys is the same model as Nars from Alpha and Omega 3, the Great Wolf game. They then try to kill her for literally no reason, but then the other wolf saves her, also for no reason. The other wolf then chases the other other wolf. I don't know, I blacked out. The one wolf then goes to the forest and hides the kid wolf in the bush. And then I guess this wolf dies. And then also for no reason, this porcupine takes her in or something. I don't know. Uh, I blacked out. I, I went in a coma. Uh, bitch, I'm back out my coma. Eh! I 
just want to hear her voice. Wait a moment, whose voice? Do you mean uh, this wolf's voice? First of all, I thought it was a guy the whole time. And secondly, she had uh, never fucking talks in the movie. Here's hoping that Alpha and Omega Lover 76 can help me again on this one. Anyways, Runstar, like, we gotta get out of here, man! Meanwhile, the twin wolves have a whole pack. And so they're all like, we gotta infiltrate the cave. And so they do. And the ghost tries to stop them, but literally does nothing because it's fucking useless. Actually, let's discuss this fucking ghost for a minute. This has to be the worst ghost in existence. It just kind of stands behind or in front of people and blows some wind at them. Yeah, he chases people sometimes, but doesn't actually do anything like catch them or possess people or anything. Oh man, I'm so scared of this crazy hologram. So anyways, the wolves are now inside the cave and then they see a pair of eyes and uh, they get jump scared. It wasn't even Golden Freddy. It was, it was just the porcupines, dude. This has to be the lamest Halloween special in the universe. This isn't scary or creepy in the slightest. It really says something when family matters to Halloween better than Alpha and Omega. To give credit where credit is due though, at least it's not Alpha and Omega 2 where it squishes Christmas into like two scenes. I can at least say that it is indeed the Alpha and Omega holiday Halloween special. Cut back to Caden Humphrey. Waterfall. Humphrey wakes up and discovers his son is missing. This leads to, what else? A sex joke. Humphrey, wh what is it? Awful moon. Sex. They then go looking for their son and that's about it. Cut back to Runt and the girl. They want to get out of the forest, but uh-oh, it's trapping them. How and why this is possible? Uh, oh, Halloween. Runt then finds some rocks or something and they jump over it and uh, that's about it. Cut back to uh, Caden Humphrey. They're in Shadow Forest now and they're talking to the funny porcupines. This is our son. Not our problem. You two better pipe up or you- Nigga, shut the hell up and eat a cinnamon oh, roll. That's what we're gonna be. Oh. Now we see where the daughter got her Look, I get it. You're bitter because you have quills and no one wants to touch you. Nigga! Okay, so aside from that, nothing happens. Cut back to Runt and the girl. They run through a field and that's about it. Cut back to Caden Humphrey. I know a shortcut to Rabbit Poo Mountain. And that's all that happens. Cut back to Runt, again. The porcupine falls asleep, I guess. And then Runt, uh, I don't know, goes to play League of Legends or something. And then the porcupine starts orgasming and vibrating or something. <laughs> A car then comes and it uh, runs over them and then the, uh, the movie ends. Wow, what a crazy way to end that movie. I sure haven't made that joke like two or three times already. So Runt then saves them and the porcupine screams because that's funny. <laughs> Runt is then walking or something and then Kate and Humphrey show up. Whoa, poggers! Dad? Mom? I... Yeah. Son, son. We're disowning you. They then bring the girl back to her home, and the bad guy wolves from the flashback are there. And there's this one random female wolf who's all like, You're Daria, you're the blind wolf. I want to play COD with you sometime. And she really talks about Call of Duty in the movie. I'm not kidding. I'm not lying about that. Why would I lie to you guys? And now they're in the woods, and the bad guy wolves are also here, I guess. And then there's an epic wolf fight scene. And then the uh, ghost comes out and does literally nothing again. Daria, we have to get you into the forest. You You'll be protected there. Follow me. Cut to a completely different location that isn't anywhere in a forest. They run around for a bit and now they're back in Shadow Forest. What the fuck's even happening? I'm like high on melatonin. I don't even know what's happening anymore. This third act is so rush, dude. It almost gets to Alpha and Omega 3 levels of incoherent. And you know what? In the beginning, I was kind of interested to see where the ghost shit was gonna go. Yeah, it was stupid, but like, I was intrigued. My question is what the fuck happened here? They have an idea that's halfway interesting and then five seconds later just don't give a fuck then the ghost finally does something and kills this guy Bruh. Daria is then saved Woo! and the ghost is happy the ghost that is never explained ever in the movie cut to Winston and his wife taking a walk or something all the other wolves come out and Winston's all like oh I accept this blind wolf and you are a clan whatever come on Let's welcome Dari. They then walk around for a bit, then the movie ends.
Wilp, I can't say it didn't disappoint me. And if I'm gonna be honest, this is kind of the peak of the franchise. Unlike the other movies, which are genuinely terrible and fucking awful. This one was just kind of mediocre and inoffensive. The ghost stuff is slightly interesting, until it uh, isn't interesting. But there's at least some effort in this. Too bad there's unfunny jokes, bad characters, bad comedic relief, shitty backstories, and a shoehorned ending. But uh, there's no howling scenes, so uh, 10 out of 10. Is it a good movie? No. But I didn't hate this one. I didn't want to kill myself all that much. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and I love committing war crimes. Here. Sergeant Woods. Alpha and Omega. This is the leader of Furry Gang. And the most dangerous terrorist since Osama bin Laden. All he said was. But I'm momento numero dos. That's Spanish for dip <laughs> You boys better get your together. He's going to attack. I'm here to see MF Doom, MF Doom. Yes, yes! Play more card. Yeah, I'm going to go see him if they will us. What's up? MF Doom. Hello. You know, before I begin, I got to say something. Alpha and Omega 1, I am so, so sorry. And the reason I say that is because Alpha and Omega Family Vacation is the worst thing I've seen so far in my life. I'm not even trying to be funny or anything. This film is just legit that bad. And you would think, oh, this is the fifth film in the Alpha and Omega series. How bad could it be really? Apparently the answer is the ninth circle of hell. Watching this film was actually painful, like physically painful. And you know, the last one honestly wasn't that bad. Like it wasn't good or anything, but it tried a little bit. But no, uh, somehow they made one that's even even worse. So let's jump into it, I guess. I don't know how to start videos anymore. Uh, brush yeah. sound effect, vine boom, a fart noise. So the film opens literally the exact same way the other three did, but this time it has voiceover, which is a massive change of pace for the franchise. It broke new ground! We then got to Kate Humphrey and their spawns of Satan, and apparently they're going on a family vacation, which is the title of Alpha and Omega Family Vacation. This is a family God. Family then argues a bunch and then they reuse some animations. And then Fleet's brought up, who is that one guy from Alpha and Omega 3, the Great Wolf Games. She has puppy love. Like a boyfriend? If it's on Discord, I'm calling the police! I realize this moment may not be the most convenient for a heart to heart. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. You mean Fleet? This is literally brought up for no reason. There is no natural transition between family vacation and boyfriend. So as you can tell, the dialogue is off to a very good start. This leads Claudette to think about Flint, which furthermore leads to the film literally reusing footage from Alpha and Omega 3 as a flashback. Wait a minute, so okay. So in the previous films, they were reusing previous assets to the point where, especially in Alpha and Omega 3, they were just straight up recoloring characters. But now they're just straight up reusing old scenes. Are you kidding me? They are literally reusing old footage from movies we've already seen. Are we sure these movies aren't money? laundering schemes. What was your mistake? You didn't launder your money. So anyways, the flashback ends. Nigga. <laughs> The brother and sister then fight, and Claudia tries to murder him. How's this for real? And she chases him up a tree. Oh, oh! Did the tree textures not load in properly? The, the fuck's happening here? Whoa, oh, man, finally, the true unbridled power of the Xbox 360. And to make matters even worse, the tree switches models between shots. You know what? At this point, I'm not even surprised. This franchise can't even do skyboxes properly. Why did I ever think that they'd do a, a tree properly? Why did I ever think? 
think that. And then there's a billion years of talking, and that's about it. And then... Claudette, remember that time you and Stinky almost died trying to save Runt? This Wait a minute, they're reusing footage again? But they literally just reused footage three minutes ago. Only this time it's from the second movie. We are already five minutes into the movie, and about two of those have been spent reusing footage. I... I, I just... What? Anyways, back to the... <clears throat> Story. So the family look at a beautiful shot from the first movie, but then they're approached by some reused wolf models. You need to get out of here. What? What for? They're trapping wolves. So yeah, that's going on. And Kate's all like, Humphrey and I have been through this before. And then the film reuses footage again, what? this time from the first movie. Within the first six and a half minutes, they have reused footage from previous movies three times. Man, I didn't know that uh, Bobby Kotick was directing this. So anyways, back to the plot, if you can even call it that. So it turns out that some humans are trying to capture the wolves, like in the first Bruh. movie. So the wolves hide in the woods, and we get another flashback to the first movie. Only 32 seconds, and we already have another flashback. Literally, all they did was cover old footage in oil. Only tranquilizer guns. They can do a lot of harm. Mmm, so sick of mode. So these wolves leave. Bye bye. You were real important to the story. Bye. And so Kate and Humphrey are all like, oh, we got to get out of here, bro. And so Humphrey brings up the train. How far is the train? Which leads to, I can't believe I'm saying this already, another flashback. I didn't even spend 15 seconds not talking about a flashback. So far, the entirety of this movie has just been clips from previous movies drowned in piss. I'm like six minutes into editing this, and I already want to commit a bunch of war crimes. Now that was a hybrid ride. So Kate, using her Batman Arkham Detective vision, finds the train. So they all Metal Gear Solid their way through a flat field, using a log that is way too small on the outside to fit them all inside. But uh-oh, the humans are here. So the wolves escape, but the humans spot them, which wouldn't have happened if the wolves just waited for the humans to go away. Waiting for my butt to see it all. So the humans, which are literally recolored models from the first movie, chase after them, riding in their truck on the way to GameStop. So, and uh, get this, the way they lose the hunters is fucking ridiculous. So the pups, not the adults, but the pups, get into a formation, I guess, and then start kicking dust back at the hunters, which causes a mini sandstorm. What? <laughs> How? I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. This shouldn't even be possible. You know what? Why am I even surprised? I really shouldn't at this point. So the wolves then slide and... Oh, that looks terrible. And then they escape and that's about it. Cut to the funny geese. Yeah, they're here too. Where they run into Flint and the bear from the third movie and the porcupine from the third movie. And just like in the third movie, they are completely intolerable. Oh, Marcel and Patty. Nigga, shut the hell up. The only two birds that don't bother me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't like birds at all, but wait a minute. Why is it just the funny geese that don't bother him? Wow, it sure is convenient that the bear's bird issues can just turn off because the plot needs it to. Who wrote this shit? Lily Orchard? Okay, maybe I shouldn't make that joke. So anyways, Flint's all like, Claudette is headed to the falls. I gotta make sure she's safe and doesn't get captured. She's my girl. So yeah, Fleet is just simping for Claudette at this point, and his friends are helping him simp, which makes them pretty terrible friends. Claudette is gonna be with me for the rest of my life. Goofy ass nigga! So the funny geese leave, and that's about it. And then those two porcupines from Alpha and Omega 4 come in. So now we have three recolored porcupines in the same scene. Mike. It's us with bad news. What the fuck is this? Didn't someone tell them the goth look is out? No, shut the fuck up. Alpha and Omega characters do not know what goth is. Are we clear on that? No feelings for her are not real. They are real! Oh, look at that fluffed up mane. So they all team up and that's about it. Meanwhile, the wolves are all hiding in a tree and Humphrey's talking about Kate or something and then another flashback happens. This marks the sixth flashback in the movie. Is this the entire movie? Just reused footage and dumb bullshit? No wonder Crest Animation is fucking dead. Their movies are like one step away from being a front for the mafia. So anyways, the hunters are here, but also the train is here. So Humphrey offers to distract the hunters. So he Playboy Cardi dial it's on 
them. And then he- What the fu- What is this? The ninja Fortnite? Huh. <laughs> I guess you could say- The bodies were mutilated beyond recognition. So the other wolves sneak off, but the hunters spot them. So Humphrey starts eating out one of the hunters. You can't tell me that's not what's going on here. And I guess Fleet's here too, and the rest of the gang. A beautiful deus ex machina. And then they all meet up, I guess, or something. I don't know. Agnes, my homegirl. Oh, my N-word, huh? And then, a uh, long story short, they make it to the train, and that's about it. So now they're all on the train. And Claudette and what's the other guy's name? Fred Fox. Yeah, they start yiffing all over the floor. But Humphrey literally cuts off the guy's penis. I'm not I'm not joking with you. And then Caden and Humphrey start yiffing all over the floor and reminiscing about the first movie that nobody fucking liked at all. Except furries. I finally got Kate to howl with me. Humphrey, you had me at hello. <sighs> And then the bear has to pee, and yes, I am bringing that up because that's slightly important. Let's make this moment last. I have to pee. <laughs> and then, I kid you not, there is a peeing song number. And it's to the tune of one of the tracks off of the first movie soundtrack. There was a little stream who fell into a and to make matters somehow even worse, this leads into a fucking flashback. A flashback of Humphrey peeing in the original movie. I want to see Alpha and Omega Lover 76 defend this pile of shit. Uh, please, I implore you. And then all the Alpha and Omega characters <laughs> sing along because I didn't have enough of a reason to kill myself. There was a little stream who fell into a river. You know, I I'm just going to say it. I prefer the wolf dancing in the original over this. So they all get off the train, I guess. And then some meandering happens. I don't even know what's happening anymore. And then another flashback happens. And it's of Humphrey hitting the moose butt, I guess. But that didn't actually happen in the original. Because in the original, he avoided the moose. But in this flashback, he hits the moose. <laughs> And then it's confirmed after the flashback that he did, he did hit the moose. So what I'm getting at here is that they retconned a butt joke. I didn't even know that was possible. How do you do that? So anyways, they get chased by the hunters in a plane and then the hunters leave or something. And that's about it. Glad to know my time isn't being wasted. The crew then rests in the cave and then uh, the hunters come by and then they get scared away by an epic prank. And that's about it. The next day they're talking about vehicles or something. We've already done the trains. Uh, don't want to do planes. So how about automobiles? This is a reference to planes, trains, and automobiles, an R-rated 1987 comedy that I've never seen, but I wish I were watching right now. So then another fucking flashback happens, making this the ninth flashback in the movie. Yeah, hey, you didn't know Papa was a Rolling Stone, did you? Can this film just stop talking, please? And so they keep walking and come across the RV from the first movie. Hey, I remember the first movie. They then see the old woman from the first movie, but now she's a PS2 model, and then she uh, does something. What is she doing? Her biker boyfriend left her, and now she's a bit lonely. Oh, finally, Alpha and Omega lore. And then some birds come in, which leads to the bear. Oh, wait, it's a flashback scene. The tenth one in this movie. Yeah, that's right. We have another flashback, and this time it's to the bear's bird issues. Once again, let me remind you, ten flashbacks. I can't even say anything unique anymore. This film is dog shit. <laughs> I will turn a nigga into a convert. Let's go. So anyway, so the bear tries to kill the birds, but then the woman tries to kill the bear, and then everyone comes out, and the woman dies. I'm not even joking. That's what happens. Oh no. Oh, she died. Nigga, what the fuck? What do we do? I mean, we like kill her. How am I going to live with myself? When the fuck did this become Spec Ops The Line? I'm so sorry. This wasn't my fault. But it turns out that the woman is actually alive and it was all a fake out. But you see, wouldn't it have been more interesting if she was dead? Oh, that feels good. Nigga! So the old lady then helps them out, and the hunters come by, and the old lady's like, Well, I'm no wolf, but I have been called a fox of my time. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Bruh, bruh, bruh. 
And then they leave and that's about it. The old woman then puts the wolves in the back of her car and drives them back home. But then the hunters catch up with her, which leads to an epic car chase where cars are covered in oil and fly really high. The hunters then crash and die and our heroes are now free, but the hunt ain't over yet. So Humphrey ends up killing the hunters and then the day is saved. Woo we then get an establishing shot, which is literally the establishing shot from the beginning of the first movie, meaning they have reused footage for a grand total of 11 times. I, I didn't think they'd get lazier. What the fuck? That was our first family vacation, guys. Awesome. The best. He almost got put in captivity and died! And then the movie ends, and that's about it. So that was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Trying to explain how bad this movie is gets me so upset that I start speaking a different language. Like, oh, so watch out, watch out, watch out, I hated every second of this. Everything in this movie is lazy. The animation is stiff and garbage. The story is just the first one, but with more characters. And speaking of reusing old stories, half this movie is just reused footage from the older movies. What makes matters worse is that, not counting credits, this movie is 38 minutes long. And did you know that according to multiple film academies, a film has to be more than 40 minutes to be considered feature length? What I'm getting at here is that this literally isn't a movie. Call it what you want, a TV special, a short film, a snuff film, any of those will do. But in my book, this ain't a movie. But it is a crock of shit. I'm the nostalgia critic, suck my dick. And that's where the um the video ends. I don't know how to end videos. Um I was going to ask Kate out on a date, uh, but <laughs> In 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Not like that! Stick some iron in your mouth and pull the trigger. Well, guys, here we are. Alpha and Omega Dino Dick. Dick. This is the dinosaur one in the Alpha and Omega franchise. Why? How? I don't know. What I do know, though, is that this film was made by Splash Entertainment, the creators of Brink. Oh, wait, no, uh, my mistake. That was Bruh. Splash Damage. What I meant to say was Splash Entertainment. I know, I'm, I'm so funny. That was a funny joke. Anyway, so what happened was the studio behind Alpha and Omega, Crest Animation, went bankrupt. This was in the middle of them creating Norm of the North. <laughs> I'm not joking. This led to Splash Entertainment picking up the rights to Alpha and Omega and Norm of the North. And it's very clear they didn't know what to do with Alpha and Omega. So now we got a dinosaur movie. I would be more upset, but at this point, I I'm just jaded. So is this movie any good? Uh, probably not. Let's let's just watch this. So our film opens <laughs> 65 million years ago, where we see two horrible looking dinosaur models. The purple one then runs into Lil Uzi Vert's eternal attack. And then there are asteroids or something, I don't know. And then one lands in the ground and the dinosaurs go into the light and then- th What's happening? We then cut to the present, where we see a sign written in <laughs> Comic Sans. And then we get <gasps> a unique title sequence? Man, this film is just breaking all sorts of grounds. We then see a truck driven by two guys who are the exact same model. What happened to all the wolves in this area? We build caves for them up in the hills, don't worry. So yeah, that's happening. They then arrive at the Comic Sans burial ground, where some more stuff I don't care about happens. You're digging up sacred grounds too? Spirits are buried here. <laughs> No. Actually, while we're here, let's talk about the animation and how somehow worse it is. This is one of the worst looking films I've ever seen, and it's right up there with the other movies. The movement itself is easily the stiffest the franchise has been. There are barely any original models, to the point where you will literally see the exact same model standing next to itself. And any original models, including the dinosaur models, not only look like plastic action figures, 
Wars, but actively clash with the, you know, the very unique Alpha and Omega art style. It's like somebody looked up Dinosaur on 3DModels.com and downloaded and rigged the first results. I have legitimately seen PS2 games that look better than this. Furthermore, the lip syncing is horrid. The mouths and the voices rarely ever actually line up, which made editing this video akin to being tortured in a concentration camp. It's much harder to edit this video and do these zoom in things when I can barely tell when a character is opening their mouths and when their words are actually coming out of their mouths. I don't get paid enough for this. Donate to my Patreon right now. I was creating business from our land. Our land. Our land. What the fuck is this? Thankfully, there aren't as many animation errors like in the previous films, but it's still a film that makes me feel sick when I watch it. The visuals are just that nauseatingly bad. So anyways, they're digging up the burial grounds because money? Tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> So some more reused models begin digging up the bones, but then some of the bones come to life, forming the purple dinosaur from the beginning of the movie. W what's happening? She then does some shit and then escapes and okay, whatever. Cut to our main characters at long last. Oh boy, this movie is one step closer to being over. So you two decided to take the plunge and move to Wolf Burbia. W Wolf Burbia. The things I do for fucking ad revenue. Fuck. with rogue wolves in our area. Didn't you guys already take care of the rogue wolves in the second movie, though? Oh, wait a minute. I know what this is. This is the point where Alpha and Omega Fan 76 tells me the lore and then tells me that the real reason I hate the movies is because I hate furries. I mean, I do, Bruh. but I'm sure there aren't any other underlying problems with this franchise or anything. So Kate's all like, this home is great, but Humphrey's like, this home is cringe. And look at that view. What a location, location, location! Whoever wrote this movie deserves to be euthanized. It's very high tech. You know the preteens in tech. That was a joke about iPhones in a film about talking wolves. The funny birds come in and then come all over the real estate agent. Oh, you think I'm joking? Well, maybe you should watch this movie yourself to find out. <laughs> But well, then Kate and Humphrey are all like, oh, these guys are our friends, though. Which makes the previous scene where they take a dump on her completely pointless. I don't even like these movies. Why am I disappointed? So the birds then see a golf course and they're like, oh, yes, this is poggers. So they're moving now, I guess. And that's about it. Guess we're moving to Wolf Burbia. Kate and Humphrey then kidnap their own children and bring them to their house. And that's about it. Where's the hunt? Caribou. I have to pee. <laughs> So the pups are all like, this home sucks, creating the arbitrary conflict of the movie. Because, you know, in a film called Alpha and Omega Dino Digs, what I really want to see is family drama involving real estate. This is what true Alpha and Omega fans really want. It's called recycled material. As in plastic bottles? <laughs> I think I taste cola. <laughs> they then go for a walk and it's uh yeah, whatever. Why are we living in this area? Runt was once kidnapped by rogues and I take golf balls over rogue wolves any day. Yeah, uh, rogue wolves you haven't dealt with since the second movie. That's what being a wild animal's all about. Potentially dying. They then see a lake and everyone's all like, the lake is fake. <laughs> I smell chlorine. How do you know what chlorine is? You're a wolf! And then the funny birds come back again, and uh, that's about it. We are nearly a fourth into the movie, and so far, barely anything has actually happened. Glad I know my time isn't being wasted. The pups then go to the woods because, uh, conflict. You want to stay with us, Runt? Nope. I have to pee and I don't want to worry about car pooping. But you're outside and they, they just made three Number pee six. jokes already. Man, ah! The pups then go to the woods and they're all like, man, our luxurious home sure does suck. But then one pup smells something. So he's all like, <laughs> and turns out it's the dinosaur. Are those eyes? The one pup then climbs up the tree and then talks for five hours. Hey, it's, it's kind of nice seeing another creature. We just moved here and wanted to- I took these pieces out of my <laughs> the dinosaur then jump scares them like Golden Freddy, and then they run away. Whoa! This is what we evolved to? Miniature dogs? But wait, 
Hold, hold on a minute. First of all, dogs evolved from wolves. And secondly, you're a dinosaur. How do you know what dogs are? They then get chased for a little bit, and that's about it. And then they get hit by the dinosaur's tail, and then the physics engine breaks. Cut to Humphrey doing golf. That's about it. Nothing else happens. It looks like you're going to lay a turn. Now the pups are talking to the dinosaur, who can speak wolf English, and yet an adult bear can. This is hopefully a question for Alpha and Omega Fan 76 to answer for me. But you know, they'd rather call me a furry hater than actually answer any of my lore questions, so... My name is Amy. It just won't escape me, will it? And then... Amy starts explaining the lore of the dinosaur shit, and it gets into, like, fucking Metal Gear Solid 2 levels of crazy. So, Amy's mom, who is a <laughs> completely different-looking dinosaur model, which, by the way, wouldn't surprise me if they just copied and pasted dinosaur models from other movies into this one. But anyways, so Amy's mom tells her to go into this the beacon of protection or something, and that, I guess, teleports their spirits into the future. So, this happened with Amy, but a T Rex then chased her and also entered into this beacon of light thingy. So when their bones are dug up, the spirits then re-emerge? But if they dig down to the Rex, his spirit will also emerge. <laughs> what? But now the bad guy villains are here and they're digging up the bones. What a convenient bad guy threat. And it also turns out that I guess they're the same wolf trappers from the fifth movie? Oh no, it's the wolf trappers. Remember them? Their models were reused to help us save money on this dog shit. Let's go. Okay, they're back from lunch. The diggers. Diggers? Now this here is a sacred burial ground. I sure hope there isn't some human skeleton we run into. But then, when the bad guys aren't looking, the wolves start driving the truck! And, uh, that's about it. Wow. Those wolves are something else. They're making me, uh, the little horny. <laughs> Cut to Kate Humphrey and the funny birds. So Humphrey's all like, I want out of here. And then a dance number happens. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. What is that? Do you hear music? I do indeed. It's doing something to me. <laughs> You know, I normally would be more shocked by this, but bad song numbers are literally like a staple of this franchise. And thankfully, there are no lyrics for this dance number, so I'd say it's about 5% more tolerable. I mean, it's dumb and cringy, but it's not about peeing, at least. There was a little Shut the fuck up! Nigga, what the fuck? Uh, Humphrey, Kate, pretend you didn't see that. Forced to attend that awkward humor is funny. Back to the pups. So they overhear the worker guys talking with the boss guy, and he's all like, we need to dig further, Jesse. So the pups go back to the dinosaur, and they're all like, they're gonna dig further. Despite the urgency, though, the dinosaur wants to fuck around. Well... I want to see what the world looks like now. This is despite the fact that a T-Rex spirit could be resurrected or some shit. I don't know. So now they're going to a lake, I guess. We're going to a real lake. But first they run by a train and the animation is... I don't even fucking know anymore. And then the wolves howl or something. And then they run into some rogue wolves. Oh no! Did you know pups are one of our favorite foods? You are literally wolves though. That would be considered cannibalism. But then Amy scares them away and that's about it. They then run by the fake lake. Even though the whole was to, uh, not be by the fake lake. Hey, Amy, where are you going? I don't know. I'm drawn to that fountain. And then a, uh, another dance number happens. At this point, the writers just don't care anymore. <laughs> The movie is, at this point, just writers throwing things at a wall. Are we sure this isn't a money laundering scheme? Cut back to Kate Humphrey and the funny birds. They see the pups and the dinosaur, and they make the funny poggers face. I think everyone over there is in shock. Yeah, no shit. Seems like everyone is. Except the crew. On the count of three, everyone bark. One, two, three! How did that work? What? They then all go home and explain the lore. And Humphrey is just so fucking confused about everything. And you know your film is bad when one of your main characters is confused. Let me organize my thoughts. According to Amy the Dinosaur, we have to stop the digging or there'll be a giant T-Rex unleashed. But we need to do this in time for Amy to go back to the sacred burial ground. But it has to be timed with a ray of light so she can return back to her former existence. Did I miss anything? This dude just explained the entire Metal Gear plot. Why did a dinosaur have to be real? My girl looks identical to Albert Einstein. So they all have a group hug and it's so kawaii. And then, for no reason, the dad's wolf model is here. As you can tell, this film's middle name is High Quality. Now we're back to the Comic Sans burial ground and we get the worst musical cut I've ever heard. 
How are there people defending this? So now the digger bad guys are here. And I hope nobody edits that voice clip. So everyone's all like, what do we do? Then Kate sees a bunch of caribou and is all like, they are not going to beat us. Meanwhile, the diggers are digging and the bad guys are all like, money, money. money, money. money. But then they hear some noises. Ooh. Don't worry. It's just sounds from nature. What? Well, then a bunch of caribou come out and start attacking people. And yeah, that's about it. What is going on? It's nature fighting back. How much uh, do you guys think the filmmakers actually care about nature? So the one brother leaves because uh, nature. But then the other brother puts the truck into high gear. And then they start digging. Which of course can only lead to one thing. I think they're about to get what they want but not like they wanted. So then they summon Big Chungus. Um, I, I don't have any more jokes. I, I lost all form of comedy. Uh, please kill me. I've been having suicidal thoughts. Nah, just kidding. It's a T-Rex. And also, I'm okay. Mostly. So now the T-Rex is here, and uh, that's about it. The one bad guy then pulls out his iPhone, and then they all run away, and that's about it. Except the one guy who's still alive, but then the dinosaur eats him and murders him. Meanwhile, a plan's being formed. We've got to get him back to the site, in time for the ray of light! I'm sorry, am I playing a Kingdom of Hearts game right now? Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door to darkness? Number six, man urinates on fellow passenger for not being allowed to smoke. But then, uh-oh, they need to buy more time with the T-Rex or something. I don't know, I stopped paying attention. And then they reuse the screaming noise from earlier. And he destroys their new home too, I guess. I don't know. Oh, darn. So then the wolves hatch up a brand new plan. And it's kind of ridiculous. So you remember the dance numbers from earlier? Yeah, it only affects birds. So because birds are descendants of dinosaurs, that means that when the T-Rex goes to the fountain, he will dance. Dance, which will allow for enough time for the ray of light to come down and take them back to prehistoric times. What? What am I even watching anymore? I see, and the music will hold them. Yes, long enough for the ray of light to hit that spot. <laughs> this fucking movie, I tell you. So Amy leads the T-Rex to the fountain, and this time an actual song number happens with lyrics. And call me crazy, but this time the song is actually pretty good. What? Yeah, no joke, I actually like the song. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind of generic, but I mean, it's a little catchy. And yeah, it may sound like a royalty-free song, but I mean, it's miles better than whatever this shit was. So anyways, Amy and the T-Rex start moshing to Playboy to Cardi. I don't fucking know. Much. And then the light's finally here. So they all lead the T-Rex to it. But then Amy also gives a bunch of exposition. If I don't go back to the sacred ground, my spirit will eventually perish. Okay, movie, that's enough heroin for you. So they do the spin move from the other movies and it looks horrible. And they get the dinosaur dinosaur back home. Ah! But before Amy leaves, it's time for her final goodbye. You showed me a world I had only dreamt of seeing. You have a wonderful family. <laughs> Goodbye, Amy. Okay, who cares though? Amy leaves and that's about it. And then the nature guys are all like, oh, we disturb nature. We will never do it again. We will never disturb nature again. <laughs> what was that editing? And then they're all like, let's go to our real home. What do you say we go home? A real home. And then the film ends and it's comic sans. Well, uh, it was better than the last one. But still, holy hell, that was certainly an Alpha and Omega movie. I mean, what else do I say about this? The jokes aren't funny, the animation is awful, the writing is awful, and the dinosaur shit is simultaneously both dumb and underwhelming. I mean, yeah, the lore of it is crazy. But at the same time, there are only two dinosaur characters, and one of them doesn't even have a character, and doesn't even show up until the last 15 minutes. Otherwise, the film is just a meandering pile of garbage. I mean, at the the very least, it didn't reuse footage like 5 did, and I can at least give it like 2 points for originality. But otherwise, yeah, this is certainly Alpha and Omega Dino Digs. Anyways, my chicken nuggets are ready, and uh, my mom is uh, calling me downstairs for dinner, so bye bye. You guys okay there? In my room, I be my cup. cup. Nutted in my sock. sock. Keeping that door locked. Duck. Bitch, you better not. Oh, okay. $19 Fortnite card. Screw it. I'm just gonna call it the Big Furries. At least that brings some interesting visuals to mind. Bilu! What the? You know, when I die, I'm gonna be remembered for this. I'm gonna be remembered for this.
Thankfully and miraculously, we're almost done with this stupid, dumb franchise. And thank God, because not only am I tired of these awful movies, I'm also running out of jokes. What do I say anymore? But Travis Scott Burger? Up. Newsflash, dummy, that meme is dead. Here's my Fortnite core. You know you want it going live. Anyways, uh, Alpha and Omega, the big furries. Furries. This has to be the single worst title I've ever seen in my life. And we live in a universe where people think Horizon Zero Dawn and Fast and Furious are good titles. But at the same time, a uh, Howladay Adventure is a real title too. So I really shouldn't be surprised. Speaking of a Howladay Adventure, this is the second Christmas themed film. So by concept, they are reusing ideas already. But is this film any good though? Take a wild fucking guess. So yeah, this is uh, Alpha and Omega 7, whatever. Yeah, what whatever. 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 So our movie opens with a bunch of static images of snow. We then see the, the world famous log board, which for some reason is way too vertical. It's like they just slapped this thing into the ground. We then get our title card, which is visually about as complex as a Minecraft intro. We then get the office theme song. I can't wait to only watch this movie on the cock streaming service. We then see a tree from the PS2 era. We then see a squirrel or something. Yeah, uh, or something. It could be a uh, Gus Frank. The squirrel then sees a pine cone, and we get what I presume is a ripoff of that one squirrel from Ice Age. <laughs> no! Bad squirrel! Those are my nuts! These nuts? So now we're just ripping off of completely separate movies entirely. I'm surprised it took them this long to do it though, judging that these films have a reputation of ripping off themselves. So the squirrel hits the pine cone and it looks really awkward, and the pine cone starts falling for eternity, and then the squirrel gets it. But then he's in front of the one pup, and then the pups wake up, and then they... You see, I told you they were spawns of Satan. And trolls don't get... So they chase the squirrel and- hey, Squirrel man! How did you know I was a gamer? <laughs> what?! I did not just hear a motherfucking Alpha and Omega character say, and I quote, How did you know I was a gamer? How did you know I was a gamer? If this is a joke I would make, why is it in the movie? How did you know I was- Among Us. <laughs> Furthermore, what is the context? Oh, of course, uh, whack-a-mole, professional gamer. How did you know I was a gamer? Where did you learn the game? So the squirrel spits come. Welcome. And, uh, the more chasing happens. Listen, my fine furry. Come on, be nice, it's the holidays. Yeah. It is the holidays, so give us a tasty food basket. So within the first minute of this film, our main characters are portrayed as murdering sociopaths. I thought we were friends. Yeah, the same way you're friends with an acorn. Ladies and gentlemen, our protagonists. I haven't seen characters this likable since Anton Chigurh. <laughs> So then they miss him and the squirrel then... And then more chasing happens. And then the one wolf climbs up a really poorly textured tree. And then dialogue ensues. My portions are small and my meat is really tough. Look at this, I'm all fur and bones. But it all looks good when you're starving. Why would you write your main character like this? But then it turns out there's a storm incoming. And Runt's all like, so that's why mom and dad aren't here in this movie. I think I know why mom and dad are so late getting back home. So yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Cut back to their home, where we see the majestic return of Karen Wolf, and the pups are all like, "We gotta find mom and dad." As the future leader of the pack, Nigga, shut the hell hell up. Up. but Daddy Wolf is all like, "Oh, the storm is dangerous, and you will die out there." So the pups go out anyways. I didn't see that yeah. one happening. Why are all the plots in these fucking movies the wolves do something the parents don't want them to do? Anyways, so they're looking for the funny birds. <laughs> Even though it's the winter time and the birds would have already migrated by now. They must already migrated! Very nice grammar. But thanks to the power of plot convenience, the goose didn't leave. And it's all because of golf. Yeah, I shit you not. I don't know why I even care anymore. The plot clearly doesn't. They then meet the pups. Woo! The plot can continue on now. Tree! 
They all then return home because, I don't know. And Karen Wolf is all like, So very happy to see you both. Oh, I haven't seen a smile like that since I waddled past a chef in Beijing. What? Aren't you two supposed to have migrated? We missed our flight. Good plot convenience. I knew we should have left earlier, but someone was laying an egg. Isn't he a guy, though? Oh, of course, Marcel, the trans icon of our generation. A film so progressive, geeks and gamers will do a rant on it. Security system takes control of Squidward's house and begins attacking the city, leaving the mayor to give Squidward community service for the damage he caused. Your boat's such a dish. Nigga, what the fuck? Such a dish. What is with this movie and wolves eating other animals? First it was the opening with the squirrel, now it's with the birds. Does this movie have like a dwarf fetish? Cut to Caden Humphrey, my favorite characters. They talk for a bit and whatever. You know how the pups are. They'll get worried about us and do something foolish like try and find us. We then get a flashback because and we see the wolf e girl in the background she does nothing though so it doesn't really matter anyways hey runt do you want to see a funny omega trick Boo! so the flashback keeps going and who cares it's just here to pet out time Whoa! and then another flashback happens immediately after the last one you've always shown stinky and claudette good alpha training Strength without bullying. Oh no, I love it when a film's plot comes to a screeching halt. Hey Kate, we're here to hunt. Can you take Sunday school to another field? What did you say, nigga? I'm training the pups today. Um, I think actual hunting takes priority over practice hunting, so... Wait a cock-sucking moment. Humphrey just said that Kate taught the pups strength without bullying, and yet she literally bit at two random people's tails because they were hunting for food. And reminder, there is a fan base for these movies. You have to be a special kind of stupid to enjoy these dumb, awful characters. I'm having like 15 mental breakdowns. I can't stand this anymore. You've always shown Stinky and Claudette good alpha training. Strength without bullying. <laughs> Strength without bullying. And now, the Game of the Year award goes to... Alpha and Omega 7. Again, uh... Among us. Among us. Anyways, back to the cave, I guess. Why not take advantage of the alone time? Sex. Wild berries, anyone? Oh. Where'd you find those? Wait a minute, I thought they didn't like berries. Welcome to the Alpha and Omega franchise. We don't care about our own fucking lore. Then some bears walk in, then they hide from the bears, and that's about it. Cut back to the wolf house. Everybody else is sleeping, so because this is an Alpha and Omega sequel, the pups sneak out. The characters then suck each other off for no reason. Runt, you bring calm to chaos. Every day I wake up! I am very... It's the Uzi so now they're traveling in the snow, whatever, and they see a snow bear, and the bear has the same scent as the one bear character, which leads to a joke that lasts way too long, where the bears think he's eaten by a polar bear, but he's actually just covered in snow. Oh my gosh, he, he ate Brent, and I'm smelling him inside the polar bear's belly! I kid you not, this joke lasts for almost a minute, and none of it is funny. Do you see me Man, urinates on fellow passenger for not being allowed to smoke. Daily reminder, this franchise has a fan base. He'll never experience ripping a door off a car. We then see the porcupine character, and then they break the snow off the bear. That's how snow works. And now the bear's joining in on the quest. Ooh. Cut back to Kate and Humphrey. They gotta sneak out of the bear place, so they... These are not the wolves you're looking for. <sighs> All right, I'm um I'm killing myself tonight. I would say this is the worst thing to happen to Star Wars, but uh that's that's arguably debatable. How did you do that thing with the bear? Easy, Kate. I sold my soul to Disney. Cut back to the pups. They slide down a cliff and it looks really awkward and janky. But then two evil wolves are following them. For what reason? Why are they here? Who cares? Who cares? No! King, those are the troublemaking offspring of Kate and Humphrey. The Alpha and Omega. You don't want to do a, another take on that one? The Alpha and Omega. Is this Shenmue dialogue? Oh, you get the haircut, huh? Feel very good, huh? I'm so hungry. 
I could eat an Octorok. So now the evil wolves are chasing after them. It's the king and his hench wolf. The ones that kidnapped me last winter. So there's that Alpha and Omega 2 connection for those massive Alpha and Omega fans. And then there's a chase scene. It's cool. And then the bear falls into the water and it's intense or something. So Claudette runs after the evil wolves and sprays them with cum. And one of them falls into a, a hole that's just there in the lake. And then runs all like, Sorry, you lost your pack. And then there's a fight, I don't care. And then the bear grabs onto the one pup's tail. Then the porcupine does the thing. Then they free the bear and leave. Cut to Caden Humphrey, again. So now they actually sneak past the bears. So yeah, they sneak past and that's about it. But as they're running away, the bears then wake up and- <laughs> How about that salmon run, huh? Oh, okay, so now the bears speak English. And for no reason to, they just speak English now. So you're telling me for the past six movies, the bears just forgot to speak wolf English? This franchise is dog shit. How do people defend this? Okay, whatever. The, the They see the footprints and they chase the wolves. Yeah, just write whatever, Tommy. Just write whatever, dude. This will help us launder our cocaine money. Cut back to the pups again. The one pup sniffs something and is all like, King and hens are trailing us. We gotta move. And that's about it. We then see the evil wolves again. And they're all like, we need a group of Redditors to buy stock in GameStop. I don't know. They then see the two wolves from the flashback and are all like stop right there stop you violated the law my name is link this is lyle we're twins that means our models were reused twins brother so they join forces whatever cut to caden humphrey they run through the snow and that's literally it good job movie you're putting in only the most important scenes cut back to the house where comedy happens marcel you're still here I dreamt I ate you. <laughs> they then discover that the pups are gone. Whoa! Hey, the pups are gone. The pups are gone. The pups are gone. Guys, I think the pups might be gone. So the funny birds go to find the pups and that's about it. A cut to the pups again. They're sniffing around and then the bear hops out in front of them, even though he was behind them in the last shot. Then we cut to Caden Humphrey, who run into some bears. Whoa! So now they're kind of fucked. Cut back to the pups. They're all chill and shit till the bad guys come in. Cut back to Humphrey and the bears. Stealing food from us? Okay, now it's official. The bears can speak to the wolves. They just haven't been doing it for the past six movies. It's kind of crazy when I, an anti-fan, can notice this. How do you mess up this badly? Now look what you've done. You got my wife all upset. That's what the kids call epic fail. Bro. 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 Cut back to the pups. They're getting tracked by the bad guys, and I hope to God the bad guys find them and murk them. Anyways, they go in a cave, and that's about it. Cut to Humphrey and Cade, who are separated from each other for no reason. Yeah, I'm not kidding. We end the shot with them together, then they get lost. Yeah, who cares? The seven-year-old furries will buy it anyways. Eventually, Humphrey reunites with Kate. Goody. But the bears are still coming after them. So Humphrey then sees the log board, and you know what's happening. Cut back to the bad guys first. They're searching for the pups, but then, using the power of shadow puppets, jump scare them like Golden Freddy. And so the pups leave the cave, and that's about it. Back with Kate and Humphrey. There's a big old bear chasing, and then the log board. And then they escape the bears, and this is pretty cool. And then there's a bobsled chasing, and the Alpha and Omega fans are all like, this is highly enjoyable. So the pups are watching them. Yeah, they're here. But the bad guy wolves are also here. Okay, who let the dogs out? <laughs> so they conveniently see another log board, and the one pup saw like. Let's do an airstrike. Fire on my target. Turn to fire. And then more action happens, and I want this movie to be over already. And then more logboarding. Woo! And then Kate and Humphrey chase $19 Fortnite gift card. And then they break the physics engine. And then they. So there's some logboarding, and look, you know how this ends already. They lose the bad guy, and the day is saved. Now they're all one big family, and I want to die. Then they go home and celebrate Wolf Christmas. And say what you want, but I'll give the film this. It's a better Christmas ending than Alpha and Omega 2, which isn't an accomplishment. The Bruh. Star Wars holiday special did better, but at least it had something to do with Christmas. 
then the film ends. Fuck you. Honest to God, what else do I say? What else do I say? This was yet another Alpha and Omega movie. And aside from the lore breaking moments and the gamer line, there's not much to say that I haven't said already. The characters are still bad and somehow even more mean spirited this time around. The plot meanders for 40 minutes just to fill a runtime for a movie. The animation is bad, but at this point, I don't even notice anymore. This was certainly Alpha and Omega 7, the big furries. Honestly, the only thing good about this was the fact that I only have one more movie left. I hate this franchise, I hate these movies, and with that, I just gotta say, I'm doing a Fortnite card giveaway. So be sure to share, share, share! I don't know how to do, how to end the video. And trolls. Don't get blocked. And check this out. That's discipline. Tell me your name and I'll tell you a story. Alpha and Omega, the video game true gaming art. <laughs> I can't believe they made an Alpha and Omega video game. No, 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 no. I mean, come on, of course there's a video game. I'm kind of shocked that people are shocked that there's a video game. It just seems so incredibly obvious. Also, I know someone's gonna bring up the fact that this is a licensed game, and it's gonna be all like, oh, those are never good, and then forget the fact that all of these games are licensed games. That being said, though, this game is, uh, definitely shovelware. Now, I was gonna do this video after Alpha and Omega 8 as a little bonus round, but I wanna make that movie extra special. So here's a video on the Alpha and Omega game. Woo! This game was developed by Storm City Games, a publisher who is probably dead. There aren't any articles about them shutting down, but judging that their Twitter still states they make Wii and DS games, and their last tweet was in 2011, and the last game they published was Old School Classics for the 3DS, a game that I can't for the life of me find any footage or copies of. It's safe to say that the the publishers behind Beastly the Video Game have gone the way of Beastly the Movie. Remember Beastly the Movie? I wish I didn't. I just was scared that you didn't. Didn't what? <laughs> Also, I am playing this game via emulation. I don't own a 3DS capture card, nor do I want to spend the money to buy one. They're highly rare and not made anymore. And I don't want to spend that much money or time on a video on the Alpha and Omega game. So here we go, the game that's better than Arkham City. Also, weird side note. So this box art, aka one of the worst box arts I've ever seen in my life. The model for Humphrey? Not from the actual movie, but rather it's from a pre movie movie deleted scene slash test footage, which for some reason looks better than the actual movie? You know, this makes me hate the original movie even more, because there was potential there. But then you compare this with any Alpha and Omega sequel and it's just depressing. But I really digress. I need to pay the IRS soon and I need to make YouTube money. So let's review Alpha and Omega the video game for the Nintendo DS. What is my life even anymore? I, I don't know. Tell me your name and I'll tell you a story. Uh, no thank you. I don't want Caden Humphrey moaning my name. Oh, I got a funny one. This will be really funny and original. F-U-C-K. Please do not use profanity? Since when do you care? Fine, I guess I'll be dumbsy. Chapter 1, Omega Fun. Couldn't have said it better myself. Alpha and Omega. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Is a story of two very different wolves that share an amazing adventure. Oh, Kate, what did they do to you? The unbridled power of the Source Engine. So yeah, these cutscenes look really bad. They're contrasted and pixelated to hell. Which is weird since the DS was capable of so much more. They just simply didn't put in the effort to make a good looking game. Humphrey, on the other hand. Oh, no! I don't like the uh, eyes he's given me. Can I arrest a fictional? character over eye contact. Humphrey has a bit of a crush on Kate. You can see the drop shadow. These are two JPEGs. Humphrey climbs the slopes with his Omega pals to discover new ways to have fun. And what can be more fun than sliding down a snowy hill 
on a log. You sound like you're being sarcastic. So we get a quick tutorial and we're in the game. So how is the game? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it- uh, what is it? It's a flash game. You know those, uh, Mario motorcycle flash games? Yeah, uh, this is that. I mean, I guess it's not that bad. Just kind of mediocre. You won! That was easy. Alrighty, next level. Wait, wh why are there 10 check marks? Requirements. Beat your friend. Oh, so it's a race now. Wait, why is Garth here? He's not in the story yet. Could they not use a different character? I have to say, the funniest part of the game is when you fall. Bruh. Man, turning is very slow. It's kind of hard to pull off any tricks. You won! Wait, I lost a life and I won? It's gonna be one of those games, isn't it? Okay, uh, to beat your friend again. Wait a minute, why does he have a head start? That's not fair! Ah, uh, yes, the best kind of video gaming content. The same mini game, but the guy gets a head start. Alrighty, the next mini game. Requirements collect 10 cupcakes. Uh, okay. Alright, seems simple. Wait a minute, what was that? Th that was a cupcake. Why didn't I get that one? Oh, I see how it is. So apparently, fuck you. You don't get to collect all the cupcakes. All right, this game's starting to get shit. You won. <laughs> nice. All right, collect 10 cupcakes again. All right, it's getting a little repetitive. Do a flip, Playboy Cardi. Do a double flip, Playboy Cardi. All righty, another cutscene. Yep, this is it. This is the narrative experience. Non-voice acted quotes over shitty still images. I mean, it's uh, better than the actual movie, I'll give it that. Do a flip, do a double flip. Alrighty, let's do this. Oh, I messed that up. Let me try again. Whoa, 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 what? What? <laughs> what? Did the camera just glitch out in a 2D side-scrolling game? Didn't we have this nailed down in the 1980s? Okay, whatever, let's try this again. What? Come on now! I literally landed and I lost! How? Alright, I beat that dog shit mission. Next mission, beat your friends, two flips, ten cupcakes. I'm now realizing these are the same three missions over and over again. Alrighty, next mission. And it's the same mission again. But this time, you have to do a double flip! And also, Garth gets a head start again, because uh, that's good game design. Okay, so I beat the level. Alright, what's next? Huh, that's anticlimactic. All right, chapter two, what's next? While Humphrey was having fun on the sl- Okay, I don't care. Level two, it's an endless runner with truly awful sprite work. That's supposed to be Kate, by the way. And basically all you do is press A, and in this level you collect cupcakes again, as well as fellow wolves who protect you when you get hit. The issue is the graphics are so bad that some of the wolves blend into the background. You know, it's one thing to have bad graphics, but this game has nearly unplayable graphics. And just like the last mini game, you have to beat it 10 times. Were they really that short on content? Oh, that is some beautiful bit crushing. So yada yada yada, the minigame goes on. And we reach our first obstacle. One big ol' rock. Now, first of all, when you die, the music cuts off completely for a few seconds. What a disaster. And like I said earlier, the graphics are so bad that everything starts smushing together, meaning that you're going to hit the rocks a lot more than you think you would. This is combined with the repetition because this mini game is just auto running and jumping. So not only does it look like shit, but it's extremely boring and you have to do this 10 times. It's fitting, really. This game recycles just like its own franchise does. Okay, whatever. Chapter three, blind date. I'm hoping for a no Russian type mission. Now Kate has never met Garth, but she agrees for the good of the pack. In a long honored wolf tradition, the two must get acquainted by going on a howl. Oh no. If this is a goddamn howling level, I will. <laughs> yep, there's a uh, howling level in this game. It's a basic rhythm game. You hit the bubbles when they hit the pond, and yeah, whoa. To four hit songs. A woo doo da. Yo, Pierre, you wanna come out here? Dreamland, and of course, adventure. Yeah, boy! 
<laughs> and yeah, that's about it. Nothing much to say there, except that uh, I don't have a stylus, so I had to use my mouse. <sighs> Chapter 4, Far From a Home. They are suddenly approached by a goose and a duck playing some strange game involving a rock and a stick. The Last of Us Part 2. It's time to play goose golf with Marcel and Patty. So that's what they're calling it. Goose golf is a little, well, goosey. <laughs> Well, here it is, the third mini game, Goose Golf. It's essentially another flash game. Hit the ball and get it in the hole. Now you may be asking, how is Goof Golf Goof Goosey? How is Goose Golf Goofier? How is Goose Golf Goosier than regular golf? You collect cupcakes, and that's basically it. The controls are also very wonky, the ball never really goes where I want it to go, but I am also playing with a mouse, so it could be just me. There are also obstacles, things like boost pads and groundhogs. I will say this, it is the best mini game, if not the most simple, but overall it's really easy. Next level, chapter five, learning to how. We're like learning how to wipe my own ass. Hate sister Lily. Oh hey, it's the wolf. Girl. He's trying to teach Garth how to howl. Wait a minute. Oh. No. It's the howling minigame again. But the minigame's harder. Should I really be shocked? I mean, considering what franchise this is, this is th what they would do. But this also came out before any of the sequels. So technically, this predicted them. Is what I'm saying making sense? Or is this stupid wolf song putting me into my breaking point? And you have to repeat all three songs again. So you don't even get any new songs. Just the same four songs again. I disagree. Chapter 6, Lost in the Woods. Unfortunately, Kate and Humphrey lose their ride home all because Humphrey was so hungry, he had to have a cupcake. Don't ask. You can really tell the voice actor wanted to be here. Marcel may know another way for Kate and Humphrey to get home. But first, help them play through another round of goose golf. Welp, there goes the urgency. So it's just the golfing minigame again. But now there's a woodpecker who steals your ball whenever he fucking feels like it. And that's it, just the golf minigame, but slightly harder. I'm beginning to notice a pattern here. Chapter 7, Over the Mountain. And it's the running game again. Notice any patterns? But now there's no extra wolves. So now it's even more frustrating. And you have to repeat this 10 times again. This is so repetitive and unfun. You can really tell the influence from the beastly game on this one. Chapter 8, Trouble with Bears. On their way, they run into trouble in the form of a very large bear who is not up for a game of goose golf. Ugh, this game's humor is so dry it hurts. And now it's the logboarding minigame again, with the same stupid physics as last time. But now there's a bear that randomly kills you. I think you're supposed to avoid him by doing aerial tricks, but sometimes, and especially after you die, you don't have the time or the air or the ground to get up in the air. Meaning that if the bear wants to kill you, he can just kill you. Who thought this was fun? And once again, 10 times. Times. I could have sworn the DS was much more capable than this. Oh, and you'll want to know the best part. If you lose enough times, you can just skip the level. It's like they knew this game was dog shit. And halfway into this chapter, you play as both Kate and Humphrey? Okay, cool. <laughs> And somehow, I land and randomly die even more times. This game is literally broken. Oh, and the best part? I learned by accident you can switch between the background and the foreground. And nowhere does the game actually tell you this. I know I keep saying this, but this is literally a disaster. I know I shouldn't be expecting much, but keep in mind, someone programmed and played this. I played this! Chapter 9, Howl on a Train. If this is the howling minigame, I'm going to... Humphrey looks up and notices a full moon, and I think we all know what that means. iPhone sex. When a wolf sees a full moon, he must howl. But does he have to? So yeah, it's just the howling minigame again, but this time on HARD MODE, which just equates to the minigame being more frustrating. <laughs> Not to mention this is the third time they repeated the Howling minigame. Yeah, now we're gaming. Chapter 10, Stampede. And guess what? It's the Running minigame again. And you want to know what else? I quit. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, stopped playing the game. And I haven't touched it since. And I wasn't missing much either. I looked up a playthrough on YouTube, and I only had two levels left anyways. Those levels being another snowboarding minigame, and another goose golf minigame. So, within the first four levels, you have already experienced basically the entire game. This entire game is four small minigames stretched out 
over 12 levels. Talk about a pile of garbage. You couldn't even have made like a 3D platformer or even a 2D platformer. You had to make a cheap mini game collection. Four simple flash games repeated 10 times over. And that's just per level. Remember, they're repeated over the entire game. An entire game of 12 levels. So this game is overall a boring, broken shovelware mess. And I wouldn't expect anything less from this franchise. Well, now I gotta do what I gotta do. You want some shit? Bombs away, boys, bitch! You smell like you farted. 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 Look, I've got this. Mommy milkers. Big, big mommy milkers. Big, big, huge milkers and huge, big milk. Yes, yes, yes. Well, boys, we're finally here. The end. The grand finale. The final meme. This is the end of the road. The end of an era. This is the final Alpha and Omega movie. And you know what? It's kind of been an emotional journey. I can't really describe how insane the past six months have been, but... It's been crazy. But yeah, this is the one. The final chapter, as of now. The one that will be there to answer all of our questions. So will this movie be any good? No, it's awful. So our film opens with more landscape shots. Because you know, it, it wouldn't be an Alpha and Omega movie without boring landscape shots. But now I'm pretty sure that this right here is a still image. Being artificially in post, zoomed in on, and panned. We then get the uh, title, Journey to Bear Kingdom. We then get this picture, which is clearly concept art. And we are reintroduced for the seventh time to our spawns of Satan. <laughs> And they're doing royalty things, I guess? Subjects of the Forest Kingdom, we are the Dukes of the Western Forest. Way to not be pretentious, boys. Princess Claudette will soon arrive. Greetings, my kind subjects. I suggest a political uprising. Hark! Where is my Prince Fleet? Shut the fuck up! So Sonic Recolor Simp is here. Of awesomeness! <laughs> And then, uh, stuff happens. And then the porcupine comes out and does funny stuff. <laughs> Nobody's laughing! I give you Brent, the Bear King! Brent. So the funny bear comes out and somehow looks worse than the previous movies. I don't know how they continue to make these movies look worse, but somehow they made this movie uglier. Brent, we can't play Animal Kingdom if you don't play the role correctly. Yeah, Brent, go fuck yourself. Game over. How did you know I was a gamer? So much for practicing for the queen bear's arrival. Arrival! You don't want to do a second take on that? Also, by the way, aren't the bears like bad guys? I know this franchise has a pretty awful bear look. But they just somehow seem to make it worse. Speaking of royal, look! The royal messengers! Those are just regular birds. What's happening? The bear then mentions his bird phobia. Oh no, my bird phobia. And it's just never brought up again. They just really didn't give a shit, did they? they cut to some caribou. Don't they know glamour when they see it? <laughs> That's how important that scene was. Cut to the birds. So they arrive at a tree, and they meet a squirrel who is Scottish. The bear Queen and Princess Kanyu are coming? Didn't he fucking touch me, you post prat? And the squirrel's all like, Okay, you cons. Have you fucking heard of d these nuts? <laughs> we then cut to a still image from the opening, and we see four bears. One of them with the worst hair I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, and the worst part? They're British! <laughs> Are you not excited for your first state visit to the Eastern Forest? Nature tends to favor asymmetry. And then the bodyguard bears are all like, Your Majesty, we've almost reached our destination. And I'm sure this guy with the big eyebrows won't be the villain or anything. It is a shame this region has fallen into the paws of rogue wolves. 19 pounds in video game currency. Amongst you, who would like it? We then cut to the creatures about to bow or whatever, and we see a bunch of recolors of the funny geese. They cut to the bears again. They're now ready to walk down into the forest. And all the creatures bow before them. And the queen is walking. And the animals celebrate in really bad animation. The nutters of the eastern forest proudly present... Nuts! Did I write this fucking movie? Oh, did you hear that, boys? She said my name. Beast! Beast. I don't fucking get it. Beast? Beast on what? <laughs> and then the bear meets the wolves. Hello, young wolves. Hello, your highness. And that's about it. But also, the bear knows who Kate and Humphrey are, apparently. And your parents are Kate and Humphrey. I met them once. 
lovely wolves. Even though it's already established that bears are a threat in this universe. And not to mention, in 7 and 8, I guess the adult bears just talk now. So either A, there's a slowly rising underground monarchy of peaceful bears. I'm not surprised you've never heard of them. Very few are aware of their existence, even among those with code word clearance. B, the adult bears have been slowly evolving to the point where they can speak wolf English. C, they could speak English and have a society this entire time. They just chose to be assholes. Or D, the person writing this didn't give a shit and was more focused on filling his pockets with money and his nose with coke. Anyways, so more shit happens and that's about it. Nigga, what the fuck? And now the princess is here, I guess. And the caribou's all like, We're here as a welcoming ceremony. Who are you even talking to? Your animal's in the woods! So the one bear starts simping for the princess. Jeez! <laughs> you a simp! And then, uh... Do you tweet? No, but I chirp. This is the worst fucking franchise. So then the queen bear starts talking. Meet my modern daughter. As opposed to the past daughter. Princess Konyu. Well, then some rogue wolves are following them. So they run down the hill and they begin to attack. The princess is then escorted out and she drops her crown or something. I don't care. I just want to get this video done. So the pups come in and the mama bear's all like, Oh, you need to get out of here. But the pups are all like, our characters say we have to do something. And the queen's all like, protect my daughter then. So they go and do that, I guess. And then there's a fight scene. Oh, nigga. And then the birds are all like, Alert the king that we have been attacked. And yeah, that's about it. Cut to the bear kingdom. Ruled by king doesn't fit the art style of the movie. How much do you want to bet they just use realistic bear model.obj? I mean, look at this shit. This was not a model made for the movie. This is a motherfucking Red Dead Redemption 2 asset. So anyways, there's a bear talking scene and that's about it. Send a message to our allies, the Western Wolves. But they aren't your allies. You tried to eat them in the first movie. Ask for Winston. Hey, I know who that is. Cut to the pups being chased by the rogue wolves. There's a big old chase scene and then the wolves fall over and the princess bear is all like Very smart, Stinky. An obstacle course will slow them down. But like, come on. Realistically, it wouldn't be that hard to avoid them. Like, look at this guy. He's literally allowing himself to fall into this log. These wolves have the intelligence of modern Assassin's Creed AI. <laughs> Anyways, so the porcupine does a thing, and at first the wolves are all like, Oh look, a porcupine was so afraid. Whoa guys, I wonder what will happen next. So, in a shocking turn of events, the porcupine defeats what? them. But there's still one more to go. And then Claudette's all like, I've learned a lot of things from my mother too, like a spin out. <laughs> Make them eat dirt. <laughs> so they do the spin out and uh, that's about it. Oh yeah. Another one bites the dust. Cut to the wolf house. We see Karen Wolf talking to the birds. Winston, royal birdies from the king bear are here. And so Winston walks out and is all like, The queen bear was attacked by rogue wolves. And so they leave to help and that's about it. Cut to Caden Humphrey, 18 minutes into the movie. I'm sure glad there aren't three annoying characters who hijacked this franchise. And Caden Humphrey are literally just drinking water. I'm not kidding you. Now that's refreshing. There are people who tolerate this. Cool mountain crash. Sure hits the spot. Yeah! And then they hear the uh, City 17 alarm and head back home, I guess. A cut back to home, where apparently Winston didn't actually go anywhere. But who the fuck cares, because the pups are home. And so they go inside and introduce themselves to the princess. I don't give a fuck anymore. Oh, by the way, remember Fleet? Yeah, he's in this movie. And he was here the entire time. But if you forgot, I forgive you, because I forgot too. Because even though he had that radical intro, not only does he do nothing throughout the entire entire movie, but he also says nothing throughout the entire movie. Speaking of the queen, where is she? And disappears entirely from this point onwards. So why is he in the movie? He literally serves no purpose whatsoever. They literally introduced an entire character and did literally jack shit with him. Oh yeah, so I'm the ass for not thinking the series is awesome. A series that will abandon a character immediately after it Introducing them. Yeah, but uh, you're a fucking guest. The Alpha and Omega series is awesome. Fuck you. Eve, what are you doing? It's called a. Nobody's laughing. Pups saved my life. They were kind, brave, 
and selfless. Can the writers not suck their own characters' dicks for one minute? But then the, the funny geese come in and they simp and fight over this one bird character because they're in love with her. And it's a hysterical riot, I assure you. Yeah, he's French if you count Montreal. <laughs> Cut to the Bear Queen, who is now saved, I guess? Which leads to a flashback of her getting saved? And let's give it up for the other caribou. Why do we need this? What? Could they just not tell the story normally? Why is there a flashback scene? This ain't exactly Pulp Fiction. Why do they have a somewhat non-linear storyline? What's even happening? Oh, and it turns out these two bears are evil the whole time. Man, I wonder if someone in this video at the timestamp 328 predicted that. But then the evil wolves see them, so there's a big old chase scene. Whoa. But then the squirrels bite their legs, I guess. And the queen does some the Mortal Kombat moves, I guess. She is definitely the queen. What? But then they're surrounded by more evil wolves. But thankfully, Kate and Humphrey deus ex machina themselves into the story. And they brought with them some more wolves. And the bad guys pussy out and run away. And that's about it. Oh. That was easy. We saved five extra dollars on the animation budget. So they all leave and that's about it. Cut to the bear kingdom. So the king bear forms an army. An army of about 30 people. And gives a speech on come mountain. And the kings are like, they want to take away our <laughs> Fortnite cards. This cannot and will not happen. So now a big battle's about to break out. But meanwhile, the evil bears come in. And they're all like, oh, it's dangerous, king. But apparently this guy instantly knows they're traitors. Simply because they have no battle wounds. So the evil wolf eats him. And this guy's about to die. So the king bear comes in and tries to save him. But then they get straight up murked. Poor king. Poor Welcome to episode two of Ripping Off the Lion King. I like the roar of that. Nigga, shut the hell up. Meanwhile, Humphrey, Kate, and the Bear Queen sneak in, and that's about it. Cut back to the wolf home. I don't know what it's fucking called. The princess bear wakes up and is all like, For a contrived reason, I believe my mother is alive. So she sneaks out. The pups then wake up and discover she's missing. So they sneak out with her because this is an Alpha and Omega movie, and it wouldn't be one if they didn't sneak out. And yeah, it's about it. Cut to Queen Bear and Kate and Humphrey, who are formulating an infiltration plan. The rogue wolves will soon be arriving. Wow, strong women. <laughs> what? Hello? Base department? Cut to some bears, I guess. They're walking around and then they meet the squirrels from earlier. And I'm based. The princess and the pups then come out, and the bears bow all in the same animation, and they all team up, and that's about it. Cut to the bad guys, who are gloating about how evil they are, because that's subtlety. And then they, uh... Let's get a beat in there. A one and a two. My name's Jester. Nigga, what the fuck? Yeah, so Humphrey's in this disguise now and is somehow the most obnoxious he's ever been. And look, two bears and a forty four. So in his court Jester disguise, he tries to put on a dance for them, I guess. I've got clown dancing, a bit of mime, and even MJ. Yo! Humphrey does not know who Michael Jackson is. Are we clear on that? It cut to the pups, they hide or something, and that's about it. Meanwhile, the King Bear is apparently alive. Why? I would call this incredibly cliched and criticize it, but I, I just don't care anymore. Meanwhile, Power. Who's got it? Who does it? I don't think I have any words for this. For the first time, I'm speechless. All I see is Dad dancing around in a funky costume, and he's rapping. <laughs> I see what Dad's doing. He's pitting the pitiful against each other. Huh? Okay, here's what's going on. So Humphrey using his fire raps is making the bears and wolves jealous of each other. Trust me, it makes about as much sense as me trying to explain it. Power, power, power. This somehow kind of works as the evil bear and the evil wolf have an argument, but is ultimately pointless as they're ambushed anyways. In the name of the sovereign bear kingdom, charge! There's a giant war and uh, that's about it. Cut to King Bear. He goes up to the evil bear and is all like, You see, evil bear, you don't understand. Being evil is evil. There's then a fight scene, a uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 ending. And then the one bear grabs this wolf and the king bear grabs the evil bear and fucking he <laughs> yeets him off. <laughs> And they do the exact same thing with the evil wolf. Like, these bad guys got straight up murdered. They got executed, bro. They ain't fucking around. You see, rogues? 
This is what cooperation really looks like. And failure to comply will result in public execution. No, fuck off. So the evil wolves get locked up in the place where the dinosaurs were in the sixth movie. Glad to know assets aren't being reused at all again. A cut to a celebration. So the king bear's all like, I hereby dub ye Duke Stinky. Sounds like the dump I just took. <laughs> and then Humphrey's all like, Let's celebrate. <laughs> So yeah, there's a, a whole dance number that lasts over half a minute, and then the pups are all like, Hey guys, just imagine who we went from playing Animal Kingdom to being nobility! They then do the Fortnite, Fortnite dance, and then the movie ends. It's done. Yes, Mr. Frodo. Over now. Yeah, that was really awful. Like Alpha and Omega 7, though, this one is really a nothing movie. Yes, the animation is bad, but it's expected at this point. Yes, the story is awful, but the franchise has already reached its lowest point. At this point, the franchise itself is meandering around. You know how there are franchises that run out of good ideas? Well, this franchise has run out of bad ideas, too. And no, there are no explanations on the confusing bear lore. But if you really thought they were gonna do that, I don't know what to tell you. But now, after watching all eight movies, I can officially say this. This is the worst franchise known to man. The first film is, at best, a mediocre and obnoxious kids movie that I still absolutely hate for being a pandering furry mess. And even the film that is, in my opinion, the best in the franchise is really only a 5 out of 10 movie. Everything else is a half star. Of course, to this day, there still is no Alpha and Omega 9. The studio behind the first five films films, Crest Animation, have long since closed their doors, and the current studio, Splash Entertainment, have been milking Norm of the North movies, which we will get to. There was a fake leak for an Alpha and Omega 9 tropical vacation, but the leak turned out to be fake. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. But the franchise has long since been dormant. Will there be a ninth entry? Who knows? But if there is, you know where to find me. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a good night. It's been a long day <laughs> without <laughs> you, my friend. I'm up you in the lane you came with. Me and you ain't on the same shit. You ain't in my lane, bitch. Nah, I'm all that shit in fifth. Rolly on my wrist. Ay, baby, you a son. I'm my only wish. I'm counting. Blue honeys. I'm too money. Ay, I'm a little bitch. You too lovely. Yeah. You're so supreme